Liberians, register to vote for the 2023 general and presidential elections. Registration starts December 15, 2022 and ends March 17, 2023. Your vote is your voice. Be heard. Vote as if your life depends on it because it does. You have the power. Use it. Register to vote. Play your part. A message. From the class we loaded with sponsorship from Africa Media. Liberians, register to vote for the 2023 general and presidential elections. Registration starts December 15, 2022, and ends March 17, 2023. Your vote is your voice. Be heard. Vote as if your life depends on it because it does. You have the power. Use it register to vote play your part a message from the class we loaded with sponsorship from africa media liberians register to vote for the 2023 general and presidential elections registration starts december 15 2022 and ends march 17 2023 your vote is your voice be heard vote as if your life depends on it because it does you have the power use it register to vote play your part a message from the class we loaded with sponsorship from africa media liberians register to vote for the 2023 general and presidential elections registration starts december 15 2022 and ends march 17 2023 your vote is your voice be heard vote as if your life depends on it because it does you have the power use it register to vote play your part a message from the class we loaded with sponsorship from africa media liberians register to vote for the 2023 general and presidential elections registration starts december 15 2022 and ends march 17 2022 in Liberia, November 1944, a public spirited person was born. Joseph Numa Wakai from Wasanga, Foya District, Lofa County. He is a role model. He's actually my inspiration. 
He's also a perfect example of humility. He's a very humble person. Through that papay, the help he start giving all from this one here. I know that when he get there, he will help me. He will help the nation. In Liberia, November 1944, a public spirited person was born. Joseph Numa Wakai from Wasanga, Foya District, Lofa County. He is a role model. He's actually my inspiration. He's also a perfect example of humility. He's a very humble person. Through that papi, the help he start giving all from this one here. I know that when he get there, he will help me. He will help the nation. In Liberia, November 1944, a public spirited person was born. Joseph Numa Wakai from Wasanga, Foya District, Lofa County. He is a role model. He's actually my inspiration. He <laughs> Liberians, register to vote for the 2023 general and presidential elections. Registration starts December 15, 2022 and ends March 17, 2023. Your vote is your voice. Be heard. Vote as if your life depends on it because it does. You have the power. Use it. Register to vote. Play your part. A message from the class reloaded with sponsorship from Africa Media. Liberians, register to vote for the 2023 general and presidential elections. Registration starts December 15, 2022 and ends March 17, 2023. Your vote is your voice. Be heard. Vote as if your life depends on it because it does. You have the power. Use it. Register to vote. Play your part. A message from the class reloaded with sponsorship from Africa Media.
All right, all right, all right, all right. Um, um let let me welcome all of you. Um, it's good to see you all, gentlemen. It's um, it's a pleasant day in uh, um, yeah, in Virginia. I'd like to say welcome to everybody for joining us. Uh, let me say thank you and welcome to our panelists. Uh, we have today again uh, George Lobo, uh, Mohammed Ali, uh, Jerry Limney, Pia. Uh, we will be joined later on by Senator DeLong and a number of other panelists. Um, I'd like to say um, thanks also to those who are watching us live uh, on Facebook and other social media platform, uh, YouTube, and uh, what have you, and those listening via radio. Uh, we'd like to um, recognize our, the following radio stations that I am um, airing our show, um, Bushwa Radio um, 98.1 in Monserrado, Shakta FM 102.5 in Monserrado, Radio Dupa uh, as FM 89.1 all the way there in Grand Bassa County, Voice of Lofa FM 99.3 there in Lofa, Fungerman City, uh, Radio Joy Africa 97.5 all the way there in Margibi County, Voice of Gompa 106.5 there in Nimba, Puto Radio FM 102.3. Well, on to next edition, as usual, we'll begin first with uh, trending national issues. Uh, we will go across the room and ask our panelists to weigh in on current events happening in and around Liberia and the world. And then our first segment, we will look at the aftermath of the uh, <coughs> the stage manage. <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, guys, but my, my voice. We'll look at the aftermath of the um, of the stage managed resignation of the uh, three sanctioned officials. Uh, we will also dig deep into whether they should be allowed to contest in 2023. Uh, what are the the possible ramifications, and what are the uh, and what should be done by political institutions as they gear towards 2023. And then on our second segment, we will look at uh, lingering doubts over the, uh, the 2023 general and presidential elections. Um, a letter from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to the National Elections Commission requesting sample of the uh, voter registration biometric ID of which the United States government has denied, right, uh, informing that they um, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. So we will look at what is the interest of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in requesting a sample of the uh, of the let of the uh, biometric ID, and why is the ministry using the Americans uh, in that request? We will dig deeper into it and to discuss that plus much more. We have invited, as usual, our studio um, guest uh, panelists: Mohammed Ali, George Lobo, um, and, and uh, Matthew Jarelini, Matthew Pia. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you, thank you, Steve. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Um, so, um, let me begin the conversation as usual. Um, um, let me begin with uh, you, George. Uh, what's trending from your end? Uh, Steve, uh, someone, uh, Jeremy, I think, yeah. So for yeah. my end, Steve, what was, what's trending? I was concerned about that letter, but since it's already on a talking point uh, from the, involving the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, I want to go to the CDC government and their new data about how well the economy is doing. I think I think it is a, a slap in the faces of many Liberians. Uh, you have thousands and thousands of Liberians that are extremely poor today as we speak. Also income per capita per item is 510 US dollars. Uh, but yet then in, the, in the midst of all these extreme economic hardship, uh, the government continuing to lie and its surrogates continuing to move around from one radio station to another, talking about performances and growth in the economy, when we all know that our people are suffering. So for me, I think the trend, the, the suffering of the people, the increasing economic hardship is what's trending on the market because the people have, are making it very, very clear. What the CDC government is not being able to do is to tell us what they have done to improve the living standard of our people. Sadly for them, it's nothing but lies after lies, and the government believes that propaganda for them is how much lies you can tell, and that is what is going to get them to the finish line in 2023. So I think the increasing hardship and other senators' performances and things like that trending, that's, that's, those are the trending issues for me. Uh, uh, Mo Ali. Thank you, George. Mo Ali.
You're muted. I think I have to. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Good evening to all of you. Uh, Comrade Pierre, Lobo. You know, I'd like to start my trending issue with uh, my aspiration to contest in district number five. Ali, is there, is there something blowing? Uh, is there something blowing in your background, like a you spray know, or something? I mean, we get AC here, so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll see is it okay now? Yeah, it's way better. <laughs> yeah, okay. I have to cut the fan off. You know, I have to start with uh, my my aspiration to contest in District Number Five, Montserrado County. And um, as I move around to talk to people, it is a sort of little bit new experience for me uh, now that I am doing it for myself, doing it, uh, you know, telling people, selling myself to them. But Stephen, why I brought this up is in relationship to what George Lubo had touched on, that they are selling to the public that the economy is good according to IMF, not even taking into consideration that when the IMF say your projected growth rate is this, they put certain underlying factors that you must do this, you must do that. There must be foreign direct investment. There will be sound fiscal policy, uh, uh, investment in human capital. There must be production of goods and services in the economy. They don't look at that. When we move around, when I move around and talk to people, you stare poverty in the face. Right now, like I was saying today on another talk show, people are no longer concerned about whether their children will go to school or not. They are now mostly concerned about whether they will eat today or they will eat tomorrow just to survive. This is what we are going through. And this is heart touching. You hear stories from some people and you think your suffering is, 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 is bad. Then you tend to, to shed tears because of the kind of stories that you hear, you hear. And so the issue of economy is growing. When economy is growing, you don't need to talk it. The ordinary people we, we talked about it, people will understand that the economy is growing. People will not be beggars, even responsible professional people will not be beggars or in the streets. Thank you. Thank you, Ali. And I, and I do share similar sentiments to that of, of you because um, 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 when I was in Monrovia um, a couple of months ago, um, you, could see, you could see a huge difference between uh, Liberia a few years ago and, and, and the current conditions. Uh, besides the fact that uh, there are economic, the economic hardship is at an all-time high, there is a high level of insecurity in terms of uh, you know, uh, safety. People are more concerned about their safety. Uh, you see people leaving from town by 2 p.m., 2, 3 p.m., racing home so that uh, they can, the dark can meet them. That is the extent to which our people are panicking. So in the midst, and, 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 and you're right, you don't measure the strength of an economy based on IMF data. You look at money in the pocket and food on the table of the ordinary people. Um, Pia, let me come to you. What's, what's trending? Uh, if you're hearing uh, some sound in the background is the air conditioner. Uh, it's a little bit hot. I can't, I can't have it also. I hope it's not distorting much. Okay. So for me, my first major trending issue is the, the sad passing of one of Liberia's best in the journalism profession. And that's Philip N. Wissen, the man who is commonly known in the media environment as Gina. Uh, Wissen and others, they've been historical journalists. They face all kinds of um, arrangements, all kinds of regimes. And whether you had a tyrant in power, the inquiry was there standing up. Whether you had a real democratic leader who was respecting the tenets of democracy, Philip Wiese was there. 
whether it was during the period of the war when they had to cover the war, Philip Wiesel was around. He's been one of the country's best uh, when you look at the journalism profession. And so it's sad. He's been sick for some time, so it's understandable. Uh, sometimes when you're really, really, really sick, somebody would think that death is better than life, but there's no condition under which you want to think that it's the best thing for someone to die. So it's a great loss to our country because Gina was a great journalist. He was a great Liberian. He was a patriot. I worked with him in my different media capacities, whether at the Ministry of Information or at the executive mansion. And he was a very cool guy working with. I'm particularly saddened by his passing. And I know the nation is mourning his passing. The second thing that I think should be my trending issue, you know, as we come towards the election, Stephen, something interesting is happening. As a country, as a government, rather, rather than working to ensure, like, like um, Lobo was saying, instead of working to create a, a better society where everybody can try, where the economy is working for all, where you don't need a government job to be able to make it, even if you wanted to do business, your business will try. Whatever you're doing, you, you'll be able to succeed and feed your children, send your children to school, send people to hospital when you're sick. What we have is not the case. And then you look at government officials, for example, someone is making $2,000 or even $1,000. And as we move moving towards the election, you see that person moving into community and say, okay, I'm going to Grand Basel and I'm paying the tuition of all the students who are in 10, 11, and 12th grade in private school. You know how we all have been complaining about the cost of school fees? Everybody complaining. No regulation, the schools are doing what they want to do. And government officials, some of whom we know they have political ambition, they want to run. They all in these places, you know, paying dozens of people's school fees in private school. That, those are the reasons for which, for example, the LACC was established for. When these red flag situations are evolving, the law says the LACC should to investigate the, the conduct of these people to see what is the source of their money if they were not doing it yesterday. Only upon coming to government, one man is able to go to one county and say you pay school for all 10, 11, and 12 graders. Where's the money coming from when you're working for maybe 1,000, 2,000? Right? You cannot, in some of the capacities they are in, you can be working for more money than the ministers or the state-owned enterprises. No minister makes up to, 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 to $6,000 since they did their, their uh, 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 harmonization. So you can imagine others below the line are making much, much more smaller amounts. But they can go in one country and say they're paying school fee for all 10, 11, and 12 graders. And, and, and you wonder where, where it's coming from. Only because they want to deceive this, because of what we do. Elections are coming, we're going to put back of rest. We're getting to do that flare. We, we pay school fees. We gave them loan. And when we take the power for the next five years or so, we're not paying no attention to them. One year to election, we jump with these interventions. But the interventions are raising alarm because some of the people who are making these interventions, the source of their funding is questionable because they were not worked out yesterday. They were not doing it. They worked for five years. What they make a salary that we know cannot enable them to do those things that they, they are doing now and taking care of themselves. So for me, that's red flag. And it's a part of the continuous effort to mislead our people, to move them into the direction of choosing wrong leaders who don't benefit the country anything. Pierre, are you there? I said, I said, that's it. Okay, all right. And, and, and Pia, let me let me join you too. And uh, on behalf of the class reloaded, uh, we'd like to extend our heartfelt uh, condolences to the uh, to the family of uh, the late um, Philip N. Wise, Elias uh, Gina. Um, as Pia rightly said, Philip was a was a patriot. My last interaction with Philip was in. Uh, 2018, um, in July of 2018, um, we had gone to San Equilly to attend a funeral service. And uh, him and I drove up to Nimba. We spent the weekend there. We were there for um, from Friday all the way to Monday. So, and we had an, you know, a very 
wonderful time, you know, talking about national politics, looking at the, 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 the we are government, because at the time the government had just gone six months. So we're just looking at what, what Liberians should, should respect. And I think uh, it's passing is a sad moment for our country. It's especially sad for the uh, the media landscape of which he, he was a staple. Um, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the media landscape. So our thoughts and prayers are, are with, his, uh, with his family. So uh, guys, uh, let's, let's move to this, um, to this issue. Um, we, 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 and, and, and let's just bring our, our, listen, our listeners uh, in front a little bit. The United States government sanctioned three key officials they, for, for public corruption um on on august 15 they were suspended by the president um and the president had announced which we're yet to see that there was an investigation to be conducted we're yet to see any signs of any investigation and then a month a month later they tendered in their resignation and now this is happening on the back when the president is making a trip to the united nations to attend the general assembly and so all of us, including those listening and watching, know that this particular resignation was stage managed. And we also saw the letter of one of those who were who who had been uh, 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 who had resigned complaining about his his boss. And let me throw this question, I'll begin with you, Pierre. Um you you we we we've talked about building we talk about making our electoral nearing process, our democracy, more of a, of a place with high level of integrity, a place where people of brittle character should, should go and serve. What, do you think that those who are sanctioned by the U.S. government should? Do you think that they should be allowed to 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 to, to contest in the upcoming elections? Look, Stephen, it's not, it's not just about election. We, we, we have a bigger issue here beyond elections. Um, what we saw coming from the, the US government for which these individuals were sanctioned, uh, the explanation behind the sanction tells me that these people committed crime against our country. They, 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 they looted our country. They were involved with criminality. Some of them were involved with uh, huge human rights violation issues. You know, to 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 put together to put together uh, warring faction, former warring faction agents, for the purpose of attacking opposition figure. In some instances, you may even take away their lives. It's not ordinary. Right? For someone to establish a fictitious company and channel 1.5 million through it, like the case was with Bill Trowell, according to the Americans. For Mr. McGill to be interfering in contracts and, 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 and business people and, and all of the things that were mean, those were crimes against the state. So it's one thing to say they've resigned, or even if the president had dismissed them. Our country is too advanced. I think as much as we, we overlook our people, our country is so advanced to say, to think that when people commit crime, you just dismiss them or ask them to resign. And then nothing is left. Because that is how President We are and his people are handling this thing. Right? When the guys were sanctioned, the first thing the president refused to take action. You know and I know that the belated action they took was based on certain things that were unfolding from the very Americans. So they were forced to act. What they still don't know is that these resignations over real actions will still not take the country and individuals who are in charge of, our, of the governance of the country from the, from the hands of the Americans. There are issues. There are consequences that will come. And as a society, we're not stupid, Stevie. The first thing is that we are told us that the individuals were suspended and they will be investigated. 
He didn't tell us who was investigating them. He said later on that they have accepted the resignation. The government did not tell what is the status of the of the investigation. It's, it's, it's just it's just playing games with the Liberian people, and that's not that's not games that we should accept, right? No Liberian in the red man should accept that. So that's still a pending question, and that's why I like the topic the way you put it. The aftermath is it sufficient that after resignation day is okay? No, it's not okay. And I'm challenging civil society, right? Pro democratic institutions, the opposition political parties. I'm wondering what is happening to the opposition political parties. They are more interested in making people to read BB statement declaring support for them than paying attention to all these evils that are taking place in the country. They have not said a word. What against male resignation is acceptable. They're looking on. They're, they're behaving as though they are sleeping. Civil society itself looks so weak. I may not know the reason. Are they compromised? Why, why is it that everything is acceptable to them? Is that okay? That because the guy said they've not resigned, it's a usual thing of go and sing no more? No, it's not. And specifically now to your question, I agree. I, I heard Chiawan Gonglo put in that point. And that point is valid. Why did we rob Brandy Samuka of a seat? Brandy Samuka went to Lofa County, won an election, pins down. We robbed him of that seat in the name of eating AFL soldier money. Small money. These folks are said to have eaten huge money. They're said to have been engaged in human rights violation. The same way Brandon Samuka was not qualified to be a senator or representative or whatever it is, because of whatever issue they thought that he had, none of these sanctions officials and those who have been sanctioned later to be allowed to contest any election in Liberia until they are vindicated in a court of law. The government must, must endeavor to prosecute them. And it is only after equator that they should come anywhere near electoral offices or electoral processing. So to specifically answer your question, we should demand that. Because NEC is a compromised institution, and we know that. They don't care. If this guy put themselves forth, they will clear them. But that's why we, the people, that's why civil society, that's why political parties, and everybody else should come in. These people labor as criminals for which they resign. The fact that on account of that sanction charges, they resign in my mind is an acceptance of those allegations. Right? And until they are acquitted otherwise, electoral process, those names should not appear on any ballot. That's my opinion. You are muted. You're muted. You're muted. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good, um, that's a, it's a strong point, and I do agree. Let me go to George. George, you, 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 uh, uh, um, 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 2023 is, is a very crucial election. Um, it is, it is, it will be the, um, possibly the second time in over, you know, in our over 200 years of, uh, of almost 200, 175 years of, uh, of history where, one democratically elected government will turn over to a new one. I mean, through a competitive election process. Uh, the last time we saw that was uh, when when the last when President Selly turned over to we are prior to that, it was 75 years ago that we 74, 75 years prior to 2017 that we witnessed. So we, we we're moving to 2023 and and, and 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 these are guys who they've been accused of uh, of 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 stealing huge sum of money and knowing how vulnerable our electoral systems are how vulnerable our people are in terms of 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 of, of the economics around everything what what would you say if you if you were to look at uh, this whole entire thing and and, 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 and and compare it to the fact that you allow them to run they now have the influence in terms of resources 
to, 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 to impact the results of any election or to even go out and use the money to win votes. What 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 is what, what are your thoughts? Uh Steven, before I say anything further on this subject, I think Liberia as a country itself uh, should be ashamed that three government officials sanction who even be thinking or having the thought of contesting an election to serve the very state they have looted, they have stolen from, they have robbed. Having said that, Stephen, the Liberian people at this point in time will have to decide the country they want for themselves. Look, for too long, we lowered the standards to bring George Weah to power. After that, we removed the standards. This is why anybody can just wake up tomorrow morning without brushing their teeth, without dressing. They say, tomorrow, you know what? I'm going to be this. In any serious country, serious country, look, for Maguire to even be questioning that, oh, there's no evidence. Maguire, you were kicked out of your apartment in Roland to a compound. What evidence we need? Nathaniel Maguire, you were living with Jimama Wolo Kali because you were part of executive. Since you, since you got this job, Maguire, you didn't win the lottery. You didn't inherit your, father, your, your parents' inheritance. So where you get money from to be giving people million dollars here and there? Maggie, by your own statement in Banga, is an emittance of stealing. You agree, yes, we are stealing. What does the sanction say that you've been stealing? So when people say, oh, they're not like I listened to one of the government surrogates today uh, with Mo Ali in studio, and I find it laughable. Uh, but for Samuel Jackson, I understand that he's hustling for his delivery. Uh, I wish him all the best in his struggle. Having said that, Steve. The National Election Commission has been compromised already. They elect the, the commissioner herself. It's an indictee. So, to be honest, <laughs> uh, PR spoke about Bernie Samokai. And I will say this to the Liberian people. For me, except something happens to me, and I'm not alive, but there will be no government that comes to power after the CDC. And the issue of the role fund is never brought front and center because if Bernie Samuka was prosecuted and the people of Lofa were robbed of their just elected senator from serving them, then there's no way Samuel Twain should go free because the act that established the role fund was very clear why that money should be used. This is not a president instructing you. This is something he did. But Stevie, look at Bill Tuare, for example, while waiting for the sanction. This man was indicted in the LACC investigation before the sanction. President Weah didn't want to act. So yes, indeed, these resignations were staged. But again, having this type of government that is going to be in charge of our election, the Liberian people will have to send a message to George Weah and the CDC at all levels, that we made a mistake, that never again in our life we will ever bring our country to this public disrepute. And until they do so, Maguire should not even be allowed to contest. I agree with PR. The civil society organizations, where are they? But PR Mo told us, you and myself, we're not in Liberia. Mo, Mo just told us that the stories on the ground, people now are worried about whether they will eat today and tomorrow. So some of these folks, I agree, they should be out in the street. But are you aware how many of them are hungry to even get in the street? So again, we ourselves, we have an opportunity, a golden opportunity, to ensure that Emel and Miguel, can you imagine, Stevie, will be thinking of contesting. But here is a strategy we must not forget. Many people in Liberia believe that going to the legislature now is the new for most of these guys that they will go there they won't be touched because once they get to the legislature they are untouchable in any serious country Vani Shemo will not even be brave to say he's running again so Steve we should not just look at these three sanctioned officials 
Prince Johnson should not be running based on those standards. The people of Nima, you know, I'm sick and tired of Liberians talking about the educated, they know better, they know better. Prove to the people you know better. The education is supposed to help you make rational decisions because your credentials stay at home. But you can't tell me you're an intellectual and a man like Prince Johnson who have been sanctioned will put you in a bus from Morovia. You leave district number five to go where to Nima to vote for him. You are an idiot. You are not educated. And to all you young people who the bus, they truck from one district to another, this is when you guys stand up and say, you know what? Granted, the election commission, because they are corrupt and compromised, they will allow these guys. But we know better in this 21st century. How can a criminal indictee, a man sanctioned, be a senator representing your values? And you want to stand up and talk about, I'm an intellectual, I have principles? You have no morals. You have no principles. So the Liberian people owe it to themselves, Steve. Even if these guys show up, you make sure that they don't even get 0.1% of the vote. So that next time, the other corrupt officials will understand that enough is enough. And that's how we send the message across. Thank you, George. Um, Ali, let me come to you. Um, um, when, when you served as a, a Secretary General for the United Party, um, you were very critical on the National Elections Commission. I remember reading um, many accounts from your social media page, uh, uh, how vocal you were. And, and to even push a little further, your party was... Uh, was uh, had gone through cases at the neck, of which even uh, everybody knew that uh, the neck had no authority to 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 investigate matters uh, involving rights, the rights of people who should have been squarely within the, the jurisdiction of the court. But yet, and still, neck took on that responsibility wrongly, uh, passed the verdict, and then the United Party, according to neck. Could not be a candidate. The, the, the United Party then took a, an appeal and went to the Supreme Court, and the court ruled against Neck. Now, this is a, a an election body that has a history of uh, of targeting people using subtle political maneuverings, sponsored by some of the very uh, same government government officials and some members of the opposition. We've seen the level of influence some members in the opposition, especially. Uh, Musa Belede have had over the Elections Commission. Uh, we, we know that for a fact that he stood her bond um, in the trial. Uh, and, and, and so with this, with, with all of these kinds of uh, information about the Elections Commission, uh, how do you do you think we can count on, the on this election Commission to, to one, carry us into next year with a, with a free, fair, transparent election, two, do the right thing by denying some of these these uh guys with, 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 with questionable character because part of what the election commission should do is that people who make it to the ballot should be people with, with without reputational damage because it saves the country. You can't be, we can't say yeah because of XYZ the election commission should just approve criminals, you know, criminals that are then people that are then criminals in the international community to just make their way to the ballot. So those two questions, can you throw a light on them? You muted, Ali. We can't hear you. Sorry. Um, let me start with the, the the elections commission. My stance on the credibility of the elections commission has not changed. Their attitude towards opposition political parties and parties that do not bribe them has not changed. You first start up, Stephen, you first start up with the legal department of the Elections Commission. The election laws are clear that the person who heads the legal department must have had five years work experience within the judicial system and must be a counselor at law. It is clear. They didn't say you must have either five years experience as a lawyer or be a counselor at law. They say you must be a counselor at law and have five years work experience. Since the last head of the judicial 
or the legal department resigned or his tenure was over or whatever, more than two, three years, the neck has having Tish Jalo presiding over that place who is not a counselor at law and who may not have practiced law for five years, violating the elections law of Liberia. So even if these matters regarding the sanctions were legal matter, you do not have someone in there to give you the proper legal advice because the person they have there legally by law is not qualified to be there. And that is one of the reasons why you always have neck people taking them to the Supreme Court. And whenever you take them to the Supreme Court, they lose. They lose. Now, I'll come back to those individuals who are on sanction and want to contest. Hey Amen. Stephen, let me take it from where George Lebo left it. Even if you 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 sat and think that you have been sanctioned and you love the country. You were not sanctioned by Sierra Leone, no disrespect to them. You were not sanctioned by Afghanistan, no disrespect to them. You were sanctioned by a country that we all revere. You were sanctioned by a country when our hair hurts, we run to them, the United States of America, for your own sake. Forget about your selfishness, your own patriotism towards the country. For your own sake, you will not put yourself forth for leadership. You should be asking your government, because this thing thins your records. It thins the record of your family. And like I was saying today, imagine your children or your child sitting in class and other children are bullying them, saying, your father looted this country that to the extent that it plunders the country that we are suffering today from the looting of your father imagine a kid telling their friend that one i would have if i were in that kind of case i would have asked the justice ministry to commission an investigation or even ask the press to liaise with the American, ask them for the evidence so that they can have their days in court. But this tells us the level of unseriousness of the government. The president announced investigation. And before these people could even resign, they had already announced their aspiring, say, to counties. I think for the sake of themselves and in the interest of the country, you should not even be putting yourself up for elections. So the Elections Commission, I do not trust them for an inch. They have not proven to be trusted. The only reason they have not had the opportunity to cheat on the very large kills in elections, like for example, the the 2020 special senatorial elections, because we were very vigilant. We men our our pools. We, we, we were on their backs. Still, in, you leave these people one inch without checking on them. They will exploit every little avenue to cheat us. And that, that's what I said. Even if we all, as opposition political parties, we now feed a single slit of candidates in the upcoming elections. But there are still rooms for collaboration. There are still room for cooperation. For example, we, we, we're going to have voter registration. Voter registration. We need to collaborate on that to ensure that numbers are not inflicted, particularly from the Southeast. There could be the tendency where well, we just feel weak and we don't have pool washers at these various registration centers and they will just inflict the numbers. We need to collaborate on many issues regarding the elections commission to tell them that, look, we are watching you. They, 
we're talking about purchasing whatever the biometric machine the last time. We, the opposition political party, need to come together and ensure that we are part of the process or we witness the process so that it is transparent. If we lead anything with NEC and NEC alone, after October 2023, all of our come on this class reload there. We sit down here, we cry, but that time, Mr. Weah will be president again. Why would we cry on the show? And they will still be looting. And they will even be looting at a historic proportion this time around. So we need to be very serious. Like Comrade Pierre said, I don't know if, well, Ellen Johnson said, administration, the UP administration, the, the, the civil society were the loudest mouth in this country. Every a little thing they will be jumping from one radio station to another they will be protesting they will be issuing press releases business communities will be protest i remember one time they had one all of funny business organization head up one other guy they said one week they will not sell they will not do this they all go on mute tell her to say that's not gonna juju joe are not play with them I now heard civil society speaking on anything in this country. They say three boy missing. They don't talk. They sanction people. They don't talk. Corruption all over the place. They don't talk. People dying all over in the street. They don't talk. Our civil society organization, they go on mute. We, the opposition political party, people always say, oh, you're not serious. Maybe we're not putting strength in ourselves. Maybe we are not doing what is supposed to be done in order to actually keep the government feet to the fire. And so many things are going unchecked. And we're just sitting, we relax. We issue our late press release, newspaper carry one day, and we say we have achieved. Thank you. And that's, a, that's a strong point, Stevie. I remember. Uh, peace be to his arches, Kamara Abdullah Kamara, president of the president of Liberia, to our own Ellen Neck. You remember that 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 powerful story when when Afonso Zia was still Secretary General of PUL. Yeah. When he disrespected the president, basically insulting her in the name of standing up to wrong in society. Where is the where is the current president? Do they look at his president? I don't even know who the president. Yes, where, where are they? Do they know that they exist? Where's Lisu? Where's Fla? They're dead. Senta. Right? They, they, they so they that, yeah, Senta. Of course, you don't expect Senta to do anything when Thomas Jonah is at the Library New Authority. That's his organization. He still controls it. The group that, that Mo was making. I think we need Subu hearing this time. The group that Mo was making reference to. Now, of course, there's some kind of business group. That the man yeah, chairman is always in Ghana shopping. Yeah, that's all he does. He was with the president on the country tour from place to place. That's Who's all he that? does. The chairman for that group, one P, one one P has something. His last name end with P. He's always in Ghana shopping. That's all he does. Yeah. So, so, so the, the I mean, it's, it's just a pity because see the things the wrong. Very good. Thank you, Aaron, for that Patel. Very large skill. Yeah, Patel used to be Patel. Patel is like always in Ghana. Go ahead, pay. That's the name. Every that's weekend he's in Ghana shopping. That's all he does. That's the name. He's Those always in Ghana our, shopping. That's they held our country hostage one time. They said they're not saying they're not doing nothing. Yes, that's it. The government had to be the mercenaries. Government had to be negotiating with them. Even, even, even the widows, the AFI widows. My man, what about the religious council? The religious council are threatening to, to curse people for criticizing the president. Who is looting the country? The people, the men of God. So, where are you coming from, Steve? -O? So, George, let me ask you this: What? Let, let's see. Let, 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 what should should opposition political party or, or or do to 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 in order to to stop this? Should they should they should they uh, uh, file like a complaint to Nike? Should they file a lawsuit? You know what can be done? What what is the way forward? No, Stevie, Stevie, at some point Stevie time, before Josh comes in, there is one important point quickly. Josh, I beg you, one important yeah, point bro. quickly. You know, before the code of conduct, the code of conduct, when they appoint you, you're supposed to declare your asset, right? And these people say they are fighting corruption. And when you resign, 
you also supposed to declare your asset so that they can the LACC and the GAC can be able to do check for before and after. The poll reason they didn't declare no asset when they go in government, they didn't declare no asset. Maybe that is the reason why I said they put their own sanction. They need to declare their asset. We should be demanding that. The civil society organization should also be demanding that. So Mo, Mo, thank you. I think you just you you just helped me along the way on something. I'm I'm talking Talk about, about saying that that Patel God name is Robert E. Wilson. No, okay. Robert Wilson. No, not, not, not him. Not him. I know the guy very well. He just graduated recently. He's Robert always Wilson in Ghana. Is, 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 is UP guy. No, no, no he he Robert yeah, E. He, he Robert check E. Wilson. Last week or so. Check 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 the check the reloaded chat room. Somebody just posted that there. That's where I saw it coming from. No, let me, maybe that Robert Wilson posted it, but the person name that Robert Wilson. So very well. So let me say this, Steve. Here's the thing about some of us who've been following politics across the globe. Uh, one of my favorite opposition group, uh, may his soul rest in peace. The late Morgan Shangarai, former MDC leader in Zimbabwe. Mugabe will put that man in jail. That old man will gather his MDC supporters in the street, in the streets of Harare, despite the police brutality. I understand Master Nabar is a very cool, calm, collective statesman. But look, political parties are not religious group. I want to be very clear here, especially dealing with the CDC, that would demonstrate, even when President We are saying it is hurting him, they say, oh, because the toothpaste that Came in the country during UP time, I want to cause a to end. Imagine that type of government. Today, the opposition sits apparently and just allow them to do whatever they want to do. The guys will demonstrate, even when President Saleev has been nominated for an award, they would have demonstrated for every single thing. I think Mo said something that was very interesting. That is why some of us who were critics of the CPP. You know my stand and more than here, everybody know. Yes, this is not the arrangement I wanted, but I wanted an agreement on some form of collaboration. We may not share the same ticket, but there are things we need to collaborate on because ANC will be on the ballot. United Party will be on the ballot. We have to understand that it is important for the ANC to also mind their votes. Mr. Cummings must ensure that. And it is important for us in the United Party to make sure that these guys don't run up numbers in places where, like for example, there ain't no way in Grand Crew and a two, three hundred thousand people. Uh, uh, one minute, one minute, one minute, boy. The man's name is uh, Presley Presley Timber. Exactly, that's his name there. That is right there. That's the man. Go to his Facebook page and see how many. And the name there. Yeah, that's the guy. I mean, you so, read about Robert Wilson who are posting the name, so I just saw the <laughs> Robert Wilson. So, so Steve, I will tell oh, you Steve. more. The Stephen Johnson, the Heron Costa, the George Lobo, and the other young guys on the ground. Look, we have to buttress soup efforts. We have to be supportive of some of these initiatives. Yeah, we met Joseph Waka came march with us from, from Cali Junction to come to Vamuma. We understand that. But the vast majority of us, we can't boast of being young people with over 65% of the population. But we are the one affected by this hardship. The looting of state resources affects some of us. So we need to say, you know what? Okay, we will need the guidance of our leaders, but we should be the one in the streets. At some point in time, we have to start sending the message. No, let me tell you, Steve. In any serious country, Deviator Brown should not be to neck by this time. From the moment she was indicted and Musa Berete went to bail her out, that itself calls for resignation. It has proven she has no credibility to preside over an election that credibility is key in, given the history of elections in our country. Steve, I think the opposition leaders, at some point in time, we need to have a meeting. Mr. Cummings, yeah, George Noble don't support you. That's true. You don't, ANC folks don't support Black Granted. But we understand 
The ballot paper that will carry CDC will carry your party and our party. Therefore, we have a stake in this. That is where some of us are saying we need to collaborate on these efforts. And we need to be able to send a message across. No, Steve -O, if the ANC, UP, LP get in the street and we get to the U.S. Embassy, President we are will come to his senses. We've given the CDC way too much time. It's like we've given the CDC so, so comfortable mattresses they're sleeping on, and that is why they treat us anyway. What serious government will hold press conference? Government officials just go to party headquarters every day to dance. Say the holy press conferences for what thing? It's because they're playing fun all of us, and we need to start acting, and we need to act now. That is what we need to do, Steve. We and, 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 and John, John, let me let me say this. You know, um, um, most times I hear when we say, you know, we say when we talk about opposition, everybody looking forward to the leaders. Well, it's good that uh, the leaders too should act. But but here's the thing, and and, and and this is this is this is how I see it, right? If you look at, for instance, the bring back our money campaign or the June seven protests, none of those events although protests were led by any opposition leaders liberians headed by a few of us uh the costa the ali the yeke the delong the everybody of this world they led that protest so it is it is it, the the reality is what affects the country affects liberians so this is shouldn't be a matter of sedition versus opposition it should be a matter that if your government is not delivering as promised, if your government is not doing the right thing, it should trigger the concern of every Liberian. Whether you are opposition, you in position, or you no position, it should trigger your consciousness. Because, for example, you live in the U.S., you saw the Black Lives Matter movement. They didn't wait for Joe Biden to take the street to, to call protests. They didn't wait for Obama to call protests. Because the issues affecting them were issues affecting them as Americans. They were not waiting for any opposition political leader to take it. In fact, you didn't even see no opposition leader in the, in the street doing the Black Lives Matter movement. Their protests across the U.S. was strictly launched by Americans who were passionate about their democracy, who felt the way the country was going under Donald Trump was bad and that they needed to act. So Liberians need to act. Liberians need to act. They excuse that, oh yeah, opposition leader, they say that, oh, but who are we? Who are we? What is happening in the country? How does it affect us? Stevie, let me let me come in a little. Stevie, let me come in a little. I think I think on this issue of 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 protesting against ills in society um, um, should not always be like the way it is done in the Western country. In this country, we understand that there are two groups of people who can normally lead protests. It is difficult to see Liberians ordinarily sitting to lead protests on their own. It is either done by civil society organizations or by political or by political. Yeah, but but still, we cannot we cannot justify the inaction of the political leaders. No, not again. I'm just saying we do have a responsibility. We do, but we we are. Yeah. So I am saying it's either done. I don't done but, but by, are you you leader in the opposition community. It's I don't done by it's I don't I don't want to be I don't want to be president. You're a leader. No, but so 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 why you think I should be saying that? Why should I be saying that? Why should I be saying that? Let Ali le, let Ali le. Yeah, yeah, Pia, I'll come into that point. Yeah. In our country, we saw the 1979. People did not just get into the street. It was led by key political actors and all of the other protests that we've seen the protest the reason on why the, the political protest actors on the should take the front line but i mean Stevie, it was student groups exactly. student groups are activists they are activists so the point i'm trying to make is when you protest in this country for bad governance the immediate the prime benefactors of those protests, the people who immediately benefit from them are the people who are seeking political offices, are the people who are seeking electoral offices. Right now, when you protest, you highlight the ills of this government, 
the people who benefit more are the people who want to be presidents in 2023. And I don't care how you do it. Protests in Liberia, we have two sides. There will be those who support the government. They will say it's not right. And those who think the government is not doing right, they will say we stand by these people. It's against team if you see the political leaders there. When I got, if I just got up from here and get in the street, I mean, you found few persons, 10 persons. We had to be a group like June 7. It had to be a whole group to get 20, 30,000 people in the street. But if you have one weighted political actor, key political leader, and say, let's go, and we all galvanize behind that person, you will see a difference. The other day, for the, for the, for the, for the Lofa County election, when there was the attempt to ban the unity party, when we saw that it was getting serious, the entire party leadership led by our legislative caucus, all of them, they took to the streets and told the Liberian people that the unity party will not sit here to allow anybody to infringe on its right, its constitutional rights to feed a candidate in any election. No piece of paper written can violate that right. The political message was sent. That political message was sent besides the code thing. And people understood we were in the meetings with the UN. But Ali, you, okay, let me ask you top this level officials from the UN. You've been, you, you been an insider. You've been a, a, a insider. You've been an insider. You 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 are at the table even when the CPP were formed. You um <laughs> what is it opposition leader will need to act? What you know, tell us what what, what is happening. What, you, know, tell us what, you know what I see is that most of our opposition leaders want to be pushed to say, let's go out there. There are a few here who want to be at the forefront. And I gave due courtesy to one of such persons, Mr. Benenai Yuri. I mean, if he had the support like any other person, Mr. Yuri will be in the forefront. He will tell us, say, let's go. Let's go. The other opposition leaders. And Ali, um, I want you to read, you read this comment while you're answering that question. I want you to read this question. I want you to read that comment. Which comment that? So, so Hawa is a part of the people. Can she can she take oh. the lead to, to come and, and lead this protest back home? Some people action is why it is. We cannot we cannot justify the inaction of our leaders. So if, if you check, yeah, let's 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 if, no, because you, you brought some, you want a little land, you brought some in the screen. <laughs> if you check how I now, how I not even in Liberia, but you want people action there to apply. Yeah, let 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 Ali, go ahead. So, so, Stephen, there are political leaders who will take the lead, but there are others who will not take the lead. We have to push them. And in many instances, uh, they will not come out. So, you know, that is the reason why cooperation on certain things among opposition political parties is necessary. That is the reason why everybody has strength in certain places. This person has this strength, you collaborate and back him up. This person has strength in this place, you collaborate and back the person up. There will be no day political leaders will get in the street. And you have police people go there to shoot tear gas. JMB, for example, cannot get in the street. Police people go there to shoot tear gas. That one there, they're not even crazy to do it. Mr. Euro will not be out there, they go there to shoot tear gas. Mr. Comis will not be there, they go there to shoot tear gas. But when you and me get there, what that January says, they got ready, they saw the crowd coming, they started shooting water and tear gas all over the place. And we had to run away. That's how it is. Lobo, do you believe that when Costa announced the June 7 protest, 
if he sat in America and did not go to Liberia to lead it, do you believe you would have seen that output and upcount that you saw the number of persons that show up? No. Uh, I, I, when it comes to the June 7 protests, uh, given my understanding, my involvement, uh, there was a lot that went into June 7. It was not just. No, 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 you you asked me a question. I, no, no, but let me. I mean, no, no, no. I, you asked me a question. Sure. I think it's good for us to educate the audience. Yeah, because but I gotta be sure that you got my question first. The first thing is. It doesn't matter how many of you are involved. The one who announced it, who declared it, who said I'm going to Liberia, everybody say, don't go there, they will kill you, and you say I'm going there. With the help of all of you people with Costa, I'm going to ask him, with all your day behind the scene, if Costa, who was blowing the, 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 the home for that project, did not fly from here to go to Liberia and be at the forefront of it. Yeah, all of you people were part of it. We, but we saw Costa coming from the airport, just when he arrived to the airport to town, it was a project of the airport. So yeah, let me answer you. By so let me let me answer you. Yeah, go ahead. Absolutely. There's a reason why the protest had to involve Costa. We recognize that. We knew that. And that is why he was part of it. And yes, that is why when you plan a protest, especially with the way June 7 was being organized, it was necessary for Costa to really be involved. That is one reason why he was part of it. Again, it is true that you're being on the ground especially with protests that involve this politic, these political implications, that political leaders must play a major role in them. I've been very clear, Pia. I begin my statement with, with calling, with mentioning the late Morgan Shangara of Zimbabwe, the head of the MDC. Uh, so what, 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 what else are I trying to insinuate? That I believe that political leaders should be involved. What, I, what I'm saying is that the young people who are affected directly by the hardship in the country. They are the ones who go to these leaky classrooms with no cheers. They are the ones who are begging the older folks every day for, for daily bread. Absolutely. What Costa demonstrated when it comes to June 7, it was a great thing because you know what? When you are going to lead something, PR, it is good for you to be on the battlefront because that is self-motivate people. So yes, I believe what he did was right. And I, that's why some of us, look, Pia, I think Stephen know me in a unity party. Most of my views are seem to be very radical. So sometimes I have to be very different. That's why I tell our Uh, It is true we have Ambassador Boycott. Yes. Look, Pia, you can't get everything you want, but his presence means a lot. Even if you call a protest and you show up as a political leader, and say, gentlemen, the protest will last for two hours. I will be there for 30 minutes. It has an impact. I have spoken with Ben and I, UA. That is something you is always willing to do. But absolutely, being on the ground, that is why, PI, I just told you the other day, no matter whatever I do for work, I will give that up for 2023 and go to Liberia. I will not be in America to say we'll campaign. We have made it very clear. We will re we'll be there. we we'll engage the CDC. We'll stay in the country so they say they won't say George they're in America. We'll go from town to town. Pia, maybe you may not have followed me. When it came to the 2020 elections, I was very clear. When it came to the referendum, and I told the Liberian people, 12 years the UP were in power, yes, Stephen there. I never visited Liberia. But I decided that because of the referendum, and I knew it was a bad deal, I went to Delaware and sat with Costa and I told him, I'm going to Liberia. And I will make sure that this referendum don't pass. And Pia, yes, I went to Grand Basel, I went to Nima, I was from county to county, from radio station to radio station, educating our people. And so we were successful. And we'll do the same thing again. Absolutely, it makes sense. And we'll do it when the time is right. And that's why we'll be in Liberia for 2023 election. Thank you, George. Uh, 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 Pia, I, 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 I think you were on the show the last time when, uh, when, when. Pia, you, you hear me? I think you're on the show the last time when uh, 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 we had Josh Solo, we had Josh Solo here, and and he said something very interesting, and I think you you even talk about it. One of the things he said here was one of the strategies the CDC used was the the most of what was happening in terms of the agitation against government happened as a result of the the party leadership not necessarily because george we are as a candidate or as a political leader the cdc was the one leading those things so they were happening and then 
we are will come in front of it at a particular time. I think uh, 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 when we talk about political leaders, it's not just limited to just the stand-up bearer. Even our party leaders are themselves political leaders. And we want to see that kind of momentum within our political institution where party leaders can mobilize the base of the party, engage the people, bring them out, you know, protest for, 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 for key issues. Because there have been lots of things. Look at, for instance, soup, uh, the, the soup protests. How many of our political institutions even join it, you know, to call the people to come up, let us join soup, let us let us stand up for what they were standing up for. I don't see that. So I think it's, it's good that we can have this conversation to talk more to our political leader and 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 and, 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 and our party's official. So, so for us, it's not it's not it's not intended to bar more of anybody, but I think yeah. the, the secondary type of politics, the 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 armchair type of politics, it doesn't work, especially when you have talks in charge of the country. You know, it's a miscalculation to think that you can you can be in the cubicle of civility when those who you you meditating against are are, are, are talks and bandits. And that, that's the error. So, Sisulu, for example, young man almost got killed. Exactly. The last thing he's going through is him, wherever he's laying down. Yes, you may contribute your dollar or so for him to you know, get his medical attention. What does that mean for him? People got to be motivated. And that, that's the point I was making. All of you, all of you who were part of the June 7, it was not just Costa, the way more pay. He was chairman of the United Party. Exactly. Right? That's what we're talking about, Stevie. So, when, when, and it's a fact. When we say that, let us not, let us not justify for our leaders not, not doing what no, they do. The, 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 the second top, the second top pay you we come into, it will make you be even more versed with your political leader. Oh, God. Yeah. Be, 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 so I didn't be happy to be there today for one year. Whatever we have to do today. Let me leave it out until we get to the second topic. So, yeah, let's let, let move. Let's move to the... <laughs> Yeah, it's good, it's good that we can. No, I mean, it's good that we can just start our own political leaders and move them into into action. I think it's important. We need to we need to move them into action. Oh, you're right, not saying on the show the other day. Say, uh, 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 Stevie, Stevie, before we go further on that, uh, 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 Frank, you know, I mean, George, the things I do, it just, it just for the good for me. That's how I look at things, right? I'm I'm a I'm a, I'm a Guaca guy. And Stevie, more other than saying now, yeah, I ran a risk. All the tension that was between JMB and Ali Johnson Salim, I remained her press secretary and was engaged with the Joe Walker team, was all over me. And a lot of people told me in private that I was not using common sense, that I would be affected, I would be harmed. In fact, at that time, the arrangements were to be concluded for me to come to school. And people were telling me that. You're not getting money for school. I said, no, sir, but you waste your time. You're not getting it because these things you're doing. You see the tension between JMB and your boss, and you're doing all these things. So for me, it was not about Elaine or Buaka. It was about Liberia. I did not imagine in my own view that George Weah would be president, and I had to contribute to stop it. That's me. Then before we go on the show, Mo Ali is a small brother of me. I'm not going to go into detail what happened. He must have had a class before we came on the show because we're having some discussion in our chat room. And I expressed why I wanted to express as far as what was going on. He felt offended, even though he didn't reply me in the chat room. He came privately to my chat room, and we had it up there. But I told him that I stood by whatever I said, and that was just my opinion. That's me right there. So if taking this position would make somebody think that all our PR men are acting like opposition men, that they have business. And I would support the country. Being part of you does not mean closing my eye on everything that goes wrong. No. When something is going wrong, we'll bring it out. I, I'm only saying, and I'm talking about the black eye. Oh, they will say the opposition. Whether that Daniel Cassell, whether that he is. I'm saying, and we went to civil society. I, went, I come from the student community. I went after my own students. Lead to fly. I'm saying, we have to wake up. We have to wake up. It, it will be unfair for me to call civil society to wake up, and I think I cannot tell my political leaders to wake up. We all got to wake up. Because we'll play too much secondary. And it will harm us if care is not taken. Because six more years of the current arrangement in that country, I don't know whether you have something called Liberia. That's all I can say. Good point. Yeah. yeah. So, so let's let, let, let move to the uh to our second segment of the of the show. So let 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 uh 
Let's take a quick break and we'll come back. We'll, we'll begin the second segment. Liberians, register to vote for the 2023 general and presidential elections. Registration starts December 15, 2022 and ends March 17, 2023. Your vote is your voice. Be heard. Vote as if your life depends on it because it does. You have the power. Use it. Register to vote. Play your part. A message from the class reloaded with sponsorship from Africa Media. Well, thank you guys and 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 and, and, and welcome back. Um welcome back. So let's move to our, our second second part of the show um to talk about the the lingering doubts over the elections you, commission. The you, were telling, you were telling more the reason that statement why you ran out of statement on the play quick. I was trying to really get together. <laughs> No, it was it was it was yeah. talking about it was talking about somebody weight and stuff. It's not appropriate to, to talk. Oh, about. okay. I didn't know. I didn't know, Don. Oh, okay. That that that's rubbish. Take it off. Yeah, it's it's inappropriate. Um, and so you know there are lingering doubts over the uh, the elections commission ahead of twenty twenty three. The 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 Ministry of Foreign Affairs wrote a letter to Nick, and let me read the letter here. Let me read um, the letter. Sorry, sorry, man. We just got some real rude folk that just come on the show and misbehave. It's sad. You can't read the letter. Yeah, let's leave that. Let's give it. It's very that normal. One, and, and you see that? That one, I took it out of the, the script because I didn't want it to be there. Ali, my man, you got to read the thing before you I didn't, share I didn't it. see it. Sorry. I didn't see it. I just saw the JMB when you move it, but it's a mess, man. Thank you for taking it out. Yeah. <laughs> But Ali reading the comments, you can see them. He reading them. <laughs> you think he's seeing it? You can see them. He's reading them. No oh, Ali, Ali put on the screen. Yeah. So I think you didn't see it, man. So let me let me read a letter from the Minister of Foreign Affairs to um to National Elections Commission. It says, Madam Chairperson, I present my compliments and wish to inform you that the ministry has received a diplomatic note from the Embassy of the United States of America near Morovia requesting a specimen of the National Voter Registration Card. The Ministry looks forward to your kind response, response to said request in order to revert to the Embassy in a timely manner. With kind regards, sincerely, Mr. Chairman E. Duncan Cassell, Acting Minister. Now, with this letter, the embassy issued a statement saying that she did not ask the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for any specimen of the National Voter Registration Card, the biometric card that is coming up. And so there's a smoking gun here. Why will the, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs request specimen of the voter registration card ahead of 2023 election to why would the, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs use the embassy's name to make that request? What is it that the Ministry of Foreign Affairs wants to do with sample, with specimen of the voter registration card? I think this is a smoking gun, and it's good that we're here today to have that conversation. So let me begin the conversation with you, Pia. Pia, when you see this happening, where one... The, the, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs writing to ask request specimen of a voter registration card, two, using the embassy name as the reliance, three, the embassy coming up to say that she did not she did not inform the, 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 the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to, to for specimen. What do you think is happening? What 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 should be our concern here? And maybe all of you, maybe all of you have not been paying attention, but the first thing that happened when the CDC came to power, they, they, they didn't they didn't they don't even make you to believe that what gives you power is the people. They made it a look that being in power is an entitlement. And therefore, when it came to power, all you could hear all the play was that they were there for 24 years. They changed the 24 year comment because they know it's unconstitutional and the only way you'll be in power for 24 years, if we actually be in power for 24 years, means you, you would dish the, 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 the constitution. So they started saying 12 years. And the way they say it, 
the manner in which they say it is that if they are entitlement, whether you like it or not, they will have 12 years. And the only reason why they're saying that is because they, their minds have been made up ever since that they will rig the election. Senior official of that party have said, Ellen was yes, he had 12 years. That Joey Amuna have a 12 year, he must have it. You're not even making reference to the voters who got a choice. That way of proceeding convinces me that the CDC, their minds have been made of sense that raking the 2023 election is the way forward. It's been gotten worse by their poor performance, all these international things that are happening, sanction, hardship, this, that. They convinced to themselves that left with the will of the people, they cannot win. So there's a foregone conclusion here. And that's why I come to the opposition people again. I say the ordinary people will be one of them. What the ordinary people would know about somebody wanting to regulation? You political people, you who holding parties, civil society, these are the people who should be concerned. There's a plan already clear cut to rig the elections. And what happened with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Embassy is just a manifestation of that. Firstly, Sawyer's wife, Thelma Sawyer, who is the Deputy Minister at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, she would not, from the time the duty of this thing came out, she should be fired. She should not be in that position as Deputy Minister of Administration. Right? This woman wrote the Election Commission. You read a letter. We have all seen the letter. Asking the Election Commission for a specimen. The way the Election Commission functions, yes, the, 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 the commissioners there are appointed by the president. As an integrated institution, it is anticipated that, it should, that it should, they should function independently. So the foreign ministry is aware that they're not answerable to you to give you specimen. What did they do to put fear in them to do it? Say the Americans won it. But wait a minute. Since the neck is independent, if the Americans want specimen of the biometric stuff, they wouldn't ask the Election Commission directly. Exactly. Uh, they, will, they will pass through the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Because it's a, it's a major security element. You don't want to play in the hands of people. If you send it to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs before it reaches the embassy, it has passed through different hands. Right? So what I think is happening as a bigger part of the plot to rig the election, Mr. Sawyer, trying to bring her distinguished husband, who was a dedicated public servant, repetition in the mud, is a part of the process, a part of a team playing different roles to consolidate their plan to rig the elections. They want to duplicate the specimen if the election commission had given it to them. We don't know whether they gave it or not. Yeah, we can't, yeah, we don't know whether they we have can it. Verify that. But just that request alone, Mrs. Sawyer should not be deputy minister for administration and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. But we are not do it because it doesn't sack people. Three criminals have to be left at their own will to be to, 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 to resign. But it is the honor is on us. We who will be participating in those elections. All those things we have interest in PR, PR want to declare support for Joseph Walker, he go read B press statement. One minute he said 200 ARP members joining my party. 300 of the other party members joining my party. If the electoral process is compromised, all those things are vanity. They're not going to benefit you anything. You're wasting your time. You're wasting everybody else's time. This is a manifestation of an attempt to have the elections rigged. If the opposition leaders all over the place, all of those who call themselves opposition, all the actors in the electoral process, the election coordinating committee, how they call them, headed by Oscar Blue and others, all the key civil society organizations, what they call themselves PUL, the Bar Association, the WHO. You see the facts. Sit down and close them up. Not a single institution has issued a statement since this confusion erupted. Nobody has said anything. Everybody watching quietly. When the syndicate of radio election is unfolding, it's unfolding right before our eyes. And we all acting like, I, I, I don't know. But as you ask me, it just confirms what we all have been thinking. There's a deeper plan to rig the election. Sally, Mrs. Sawyer, the wife of a, of a, of a, of a late statement, 
a dedicated public servant, a former interim president, has allowed herself to be used, you know, to spearhead something that is criminal in nature. Church. Stephen, it's very, very concerning. Uh, one would think that a government that came to power on the promise of transforming the lives of our people and doing things better. The accusations that were made during the 2016, 2017 election cycle was about how bad the UP had performed. Sadly for us, the CDC will come to power and not only that will perform poorly, but the CDC government had no understanding of the problem. And the solution to solving any problem in, in life is first knowing what is the problem. If you don't know the problem, you can't solve the problem. And one of the problems the CDC is having as a government is because they just don't know what the problems are. Having said that, Steve, uh, I think PR spoke for me. Uh, it is sickening that a man who fought so hard to decentralize government, to give power to the people, everything the late Evan Sawyer stood for is the opposite of what his wife demonstrated. This is a man who was appointed and said he would not do it, would not take on that, he would not take that position. Sadly for us. Let Pia said, President, we are don't fire people. I'm gonna tell you, Steve. If you were dismissed by George Weir, that would be one of the greatest embarrassments on your resume forever and ever. This is a president who lacks the ability to dismiss anybody. President Weir is the only president in the whole world that his government, over 85% of his entire staff he brought to power, still remain in the same position. Madam Bio made changes with the Minister of Finance, Minister of Foreign Affairs in the first one year. But again, because the president has no understanding of his job description. For him, he thinks it's about morale. I will say this. For we Liberians, this is concerning. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs to submit such a request. PR, maybe I was not in Liberia because when UP were in power, I didn't visit the country. And you are press secretary to Madam Sally. Saying you people were sharing the foreign affair. Do you recall such a communication from the foreign affair to NEC during your time? <laughs> how, could, how could I even be? Oh, we're running. A, we're, run, we're, we're running serious government. We're not. We're not. We're not. We're not institutionalizing gangsterism. We're running so serious Steve, government. Steve, I will tell you straight up front. Political party leaders. At some point in time, we need to begin to have meetings. We need to collaborate on certain things, because the issue, the credibility of this election, affect every single one of us. The Unity Party, the ANC, the ALP, the LP, any political party. But this is bad. President Weir should dismiss the Deputy Minister of Administration. Look, you are trying... Why do you think, John, a quick question. Why do you think he should dismiss her when she's acting on his order? Again, Steve, look, one of the reasons why I try not to argue on the issue of sanctions you know, people, protégés, supporters, and sympathizers of the government continue to puffer these lies that, oh, it is, it is three officials that were just sanctioned, not the government. Maguire was never sanctioned when Maguire was broke and he, would, he was not in government. Did they sanction Maguire as an individual, as a Catholic priest? He was sanctioned as a government official of the CDC. Indirectly, the CDC government have been sanctioned. People need to understand it. Steve, we know that nothing happened with top president. We have acknowledgement. But again, to save face, President We are will put someone under the bus, and we are saying at this particular point in time, I strongly believe that this is a wider plan. But here's my take. 
for me, I have been very clear on the records. In Monrovia, outside Monrovia, this is how I speak. And my message to the CDC has been very, very clear. President, we are stop giving yourself hard time. Replace the director Lassana Brown with your wife at night. Maybe that will make you happy. But let me say one thing, Steve O. If the Liberian people who claim to be suffering today will go out in 2023, look, we should not be discussing runoff. Part of the reason and part of this guy's strategy, you Liberian people got issues. We need to go to the election 2023 with a determination that, you know what? We want to send a message across that we are going to vote on this one day, folks. When you vote, you stay at, your, at that particular voting precinct to ensure that your votes are counted. Don't leave from there. You have been suffering for the past six years. Staying there that one day will not change your life. Ensure that we stay there. We have to vote and make sure that, look, Ambassador Boyka accumulates 50 plus one so that we don't discuss one up with the CDC. Any attempt to give George Weah a reason to think that he can cheat is on us because we will know how well we are feeling. We need to ensure that when we vote in 2023, when they call in the results, when they say JMB 300, George Weah 4, there's in no way in hell President we are will do any math at his house to ensure that he can win election. But you people have an obligation to yourself. And when you vote in, you vote against your suffering. And when you vote in against your suffering, President Weah will not even be thinking of going to the runoff. So again, all these incompetent, unprofessional, unethical government officials we have in power, it is because of the decisions we've made. And I continue to say to you people, for CDC people to even be brave to be talking about, oh, we could win election and this and this and that, it's because, you know what? They have no respect for you. They have no trust in you. Because anybody who you elected to make your life better, that have disrespected you, that have violated you, that have treated you like some slave in your own country, for them to even be thinking that you will be brave to take shower in the morning and go to the ballot box or vote for them, that is gross disrespect to you. So you go to the border bases and send a message to George Weah. That is what you need to do. And forget about all these incompetent people. If we vote over Wemile, then in no way George Weah anywhere can do the math to change it. Because at that time, George Weah will get exactly what he wants. Let's just Thank give you. it to him in the legal way. Thank, Thank you. you. Mo Ali. You're muted. Hello, okay, can you hear you. So I was saying, yeah. I don't know it's a browser that I'm using. Sometimes it just can unmute easily. Yeah, it happened. Well, I tried to unmute you, said, tell me that I can't. Yeah, we, 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 we've discussed the Elections Commission, and I don't think we will get tired discussing them. Um, I don't know why anyone who wants to request a specimen, a specimen from the Elections Commission. Now, let's even assume if the US, U.S. Embassy were doing that. Political parties should be in the know because this is not just an ordinary passport issue. You're talking about something that could be reproduced to give to people who are underage, to give to people who may not have registered, to give to people who are in other countries. And to give borders. to people multiple cards. You notice that when we are yes when you are registering when when election registration is going on people cross from sierra leone to cape mount to register people cross from guinea and sierra leone to to lofa and nimba to register people cross from ivory coast to grandjida and maryland to in fact to nimba grandjida and maryland to register it's a very polarized thing 
Now, if you have a government that is requesting specimen from the Elections Commission, they should concern every single Liberian, but most of all, it should concern we, the political leaders. It should concern we, the political parties. Because you know what? Stephen, there are people who don't care who wins election. You remember in 2017 when we went to Cape Town, to my hometown, after the first round? Yeah. You remember the guy who came out when we were asking how they voted and why they voted the way they did? Yeah. And this guy came and said, look, a Buenco for living. He said, Joseph Bakai win, I will still Buenco. Charles Bronski wins, I will still Buenco. George Weah wins, I will still Buenco. So that guy doesn't care. He doesn't care about whether somebody cheats in the election because he has resigned to the fact that his life now is just burning coal. He has not come to the realization that he can, even if you are burning coal for the rest of his life, but that that business could be transformed to make him to get more money from the burning coal. The onus is on us. We will go to the people to ask them to vote for us, to change their lives, to institute policies, to change their lives. If we sit here, if we were to sit here and allow people to duplicate voter registration cards, because remember, this is the government. If they were to duplicate the cards and even duplicate the specimen, they will instruct people who are presiding officers at the various polling centers to allow them to come in. That's happened. And they will do that even more effectively in areas that are perceived to be their quote unquote stronghold. And that's how cheating in election happens. The cheating does not start on election day. It's a whole process, a whole nine-year process that starts small, small. They do it small, small. Because you can't just go one day, the day you're going to vote. Then you go cheat on that day. You got to start a process small, small for the recruitment of the, the pool workers. You know they can cheat from the recruitment of the pool workers, right? Yeah. If the people who are recruited have corrupt minds, even from within the political parties, they, 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 they pull washers. Imagine Stephen Johnson, you have a pool washer to a particular pooling center. This person is supposed to be your partisan. This person is supposed to be your supporter. But you get zero to that pooling center. That means your own partisan able for Imagine you. Imagine what will happen if they were... <laughs> Imagine what's going to happen at that particular polling center if they want to cheat. They will just inflate the numbers and that guy, and that guy or that girl lady will just be there and they will just agree to everything because they're not even for you in the first day. The person is not voting for you. Mm -hmm. So this is dangerous. We must understand clearly whoever is requesting for these specimens, why are they requesting for them? And what are the security measures being put into place to ensure that their, their safety is guaranteed that nobody takes those specimens and duplicate them for the gains of the government, for the purpose of cheating in the elections? These are things that must be done. And if we don't raise the concerns, if our political parties do not raise the concerns, look, we will just talk. If the party raises issues and raises the issues vehemently and make a representation at the Elections Commission to demand to know what is going on, look, they will respond. When I talk up the issue of, of, of Tish, Tish Jalo, I didn't understand. I wrote a letter to Nick. I threatened quote action through uh, uh, Councilor Nito Zaza Lai. The next day, 
the Etta Brown last night was on the radio on OK FM, the call. She denied flatly that the guy is the head of the legal department. She denied flatly. She said the guy is not the head. And guess what she said? The neck does not have money to hire a lawyer to be head of the legal department. That's what oh. she said on the radio. Till today, it means that that position is vacant. It means that the neck does not even have a legal team. It means that the neck does not have a legal advisor. It means that the neck does not have somebody presiding over that legal department. Therefore, when requests come from the people, from anybody outside, who advises the net on what to do in these kind of instances? Who tells them, oh, by law, you're supposed to do this, or by law, you are not supposed to do this? By law, whatever data or specimen that is with the Elections Commission should be protected. The integrity of the data should be protected because these are things that determine who becomes a representative, that determines who becomes a senator, that determines who becomes a president. If you make mistake with them, chaos will come in the country. So the whole neck is they just there. They just operating under the director Brown last and now. And a case go there, she said, the case you talk is three o'clock. She said you the lawyer present a whole novel of evidence and, 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 and legal brief and everything. She said, come by in 30 minutes, we'll get the ruling. That all they all over there and cheating Thank all you. over the place. Thank you, Mo. No, Stephen, the, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs own the Liberian people's on explanation. What I read in Front Page Africa is annoying. Front Page Africa said, Foreign Ministry people said, uh, the acting minister, the woman who who is said to have written the letter is out of the country. But that's an institution, right? And yeah. I can talk to anybody in Liberia so they know where she is. They can talk to her. They can do exactly. it. They, are, they have so many ways to talk Sylvester to her. Sylvester Peewee is there. He's the assistant minister for press and whatever affair. No, he, he, he resigned. Oh, he resigned? Sylvester been overseas for the last, I think, two years or so. The other day, more than your history with Sylvester? He's there. No, he, he, no, he, he, he resigned or he won't stay to leave? They, they, they appointed somebody in your position recently. Oh, okay. All right. So, but the point I'm making is that it, it doesn't have to be Sylvester, right? The Ministry of Foreign Affairs, there's some grave issues, Stephen. You say you want to do biometric election, right? We, many people are applying. They say, okay, we reduce, blah, 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 blah. But to the extent now that the specimen is being requested by, by an authority at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs using the embassy name, the embassy are already clear that means they really ask for it. So that part of it clear. So Foreign Ministry now got to tell us something. Since the embassy they didn't ask for it, according to their, their, their press statement, but we have letter to prove that your acting minister at the time asked for the specimen, we need more explanation to you than that. Look, that issue is not just about election. It's about trying to plunge the entire country into crisis because I always say on the show, what brought the civil war was tempering with elections. Mm -hmm. There's on the direct attempt to temper with the election. There's an attempt to interfere with the electoral process. And the, 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 the consequence could be a full return to violence, to crisis. That's what Chairman Sawyer, the wife of Amos Sawyer, have done. And we need explanation. It should not end on this talk show conversation. So we will not act. Yeah, that's a business. But we got we to gotta hammer it to the extent that this government should say something. What is going on? Why is the election commission allowing herself to be overcrowded by controversy after controversy, one after the other? That's how election commissions behave. Let them learn from President like Kenya. The sitting president left his vice president, a man who, who worked with him for 10 years. He said a man did not deserve the honor of replacing him as president. And he left his own party and, and endorsed. Raila Odinga. And you think that the, the sitting president had all the power you influence something. But the electoral commission stood up. They, they, for the first time in Kenya, as the votes were being tabulated, it was electronically followed by everybody anywhere in Kenya. 
And the vice president, who is own president stabbed in the side, won that election flat down because the process was credible and transparent. It was not influenced by President Kiata. That's what we want in Liberia. When somebody is chosen as our president, that person should be the word of the people. What NEC is doing, what the foreign ministry is doing, does not convince me that that's what we are having. We're in trouble. And we must add. Steve, can I follow on one thing what Pia said? Just to add one thing. Pia, there is a lesson from the elections in Kenya. You write for the state. You who did not support the right uh, 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 William Ruto. But you know what the people of Kenya did? That is what Liberians failed to do in 2017. The people of Kenya said, this is who we want, regardless of that. We had the same scenario in our country. What did we do? And we went with George Weah. So look, Liberians must learn we, from what is happening. Uh, we, 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 report, we, we reportedly went with George Weah. Okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah. you know, I'm I don't have the time. vocabulary, aggressive word that you people from LU got. So I'm sorry, I may not use the words that you people have. You and Steve, I think you'll get distribute words uh, on the refugees from Ukraine for the next two years because you're from you, you got a lot of words in your in your reservoirs. Yeah, so <laughs> I will leave it that way. So, 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 let me just provide the information. So, best uh, on Thursday of last week, which was September September eighth, um, the executive mansion um, issued a press release saying that uh, one David Akwe has been named Assistant Minister for Public Affairs at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Um, he replaces Mr. Sylvester Pew, who resigned last month. So Pew resigned in, in August. David, so it's good. David, so guys, David, um, David, I think... David, um, David, David ben, for, just for your information, David Ben in our place for rank of agent. David was... He was he was an honor man to, to, to Wesley Washington. He was an honor man to Horatio Bobby Willie. So he's been there for long. He's, he's an institutional memory. He, he he worked in the place for a very long time. So, I mean, it's, it's a suitable appointment. He's qualified for the job. Thank you. Yeah. So, guys, um, we, 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 we almost... Let, 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 we want to open the line so that yes, we, can, yeah. we can... We can we can talk to our people, especially those in Liberia and uh, those in, in the U.S. also. Lobo, 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 are we having a draft? Are you having a draft today? <laughs> The draft is always on schedule. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm asking because I mean I, I, I have some desire to to, to show face this. Okay, evening. the I'm draft, not... yeah, you can you can join us. We are going to the draft. Uh what 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 was not completed here will get completed on the draft. That is how it's gonna proceed. Uh, okay. It, it, so, so um, um the number so let, let's yeah um, the, the, the draft does not run parallel to our objective so it, it's almost like the same platform we can system, be there it's a system platform yeah it's a system platform so uh those listening the number to call if you if you like Bira is uh zero seven and like, seven and not like the other people that we we are running parallel to i don't want to call <laughs> names <laughs> We'll get raw parallel to a soap opera, you know, every day drama we're not in our theater. This, nah, <laughs> this is not a comedy show, it's not a theater of jokes. We we'll come here, we 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 we'll present facts, we we'll talk about critical issues, we research before we come, of course. We, we don't we don't get text yeah. messages on the phone to this. I got a caller on the line. Yeah, Ali, let's take your call. Hold on, I got a caller on the line, please. Yeah, hello. Your name, I'm calling from where? This is Otello Tier. I joined you from Grand Basel. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I just want to say one shot to all the guests on the show tonight. Clan I, you see, it is saddening to say this. And I follow your discussion with respect to. The coming election. I want me new. What we need to do here, uh, Mr. Ali, and the other folks in in, 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 in in the discussion, we have to share our eye uh, because we are from the United Party. We are not taking anything lightly, as you people have said. We, we as electors, we are like Bureau and people of this nation. We have to share our eyes to ensure that. There will be a transparent election because if we are not careful, 
President, we are a CDC KL will do everything to rig the election, which they have, President, we have failed to understand that it is because of rigging election took like 12 to 14 years that days. Thank you, Chief. The very part is why he tried to take. Thank you. Let's say another caller. Thank you very much. Hello? Yeah, how are you there? Your name and where are you calling from? This is Joe Boy Cooper. I uh, call from the 8th Center Monrovia. Where? Uh, thank you so much, Mo Ali, uh, Mo, and my dear brother uh, Johnson, as well as Jeremy Mepia. You know, the, 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 the conversation tonight is so interesting and it brought down directly to we, the opposition. When will we dedicate our, our president or vice president for the opposition black to allow the people of Liberia to have one focus? We have Tebu, we have Joe Buaka, we have Ellis Cummings. As far as I'm concerned, those are the three major contenders within the opposition black. I can stir the shit. Will it be difficult for us to sit as a family and make a decision to allow our people not to permit CDC to take us to second round? Simple. Let that be done in the soonest possible time. Two, remember, if we just consolidate our opposition black in a way where we will present a team to say this is our president, this is our vice president, on a ticket, one group, that ticket we may have, we can select all of our ministers. We can get prepared to prosecute CDC less criminals. We can get prepared to elect all of our senators and representatives that are supposed to go to the House. Thank you. So Thank you, Bob. On Bob. the contrary, if we do not prepare a team, we are still heading for disaster. Thank you, boy. Thank you. You what? Hello. Good evening. Yeah, good evening. Your name and where are you calling from? Oh, uh, thank you very much, uh, LG Mo. This is the voice of Usman Mberete, and uh, I'm the chair person of the United Party from your from this Go ahead. And thank you, uh, SD Mo, because today the conversion I took part at uh, OPFM. You, know, you, you sound a little low. You need to increase your volume more. Hello? Yeah, go ahead now, getting you. Yeah, I said the conversion that took place today between you and all of God on the platform at OPFM, I must commend you, everybody. Thank you very much. And also to John Lobo, I think, uh, I think I heard it in the voice of John Lobo, I'm happy. Going to appear on the square thing, the use of suppressing, you know, he was not giving the opportunity at all, you know, and Stephen Johnson, all of them. So, thank you guys. Uh, like you rightly said, the election, the election issue is very critical. We, the opposition, as well as the United Party, whether you like it or not, the race is between George Weir and, and, and Barkai. So, we have to take the lead and we have to really take the issue of the fact very seriously. Because, like you rightly said, elections are rigged not on the day of the election, but or the population to invest in their way So we have to look up, we have to be very serious here, so that we can get chance for the government to win this election because they know very well that they are paid. All the survey have been conducted, it's not a secret. Jehovah is in the lead, it's not a secret. So the only thing they have to do is say, no, we have friends, we have families in the CBC. They always tell us, little gentlemen, we are not going to win the election. Thank you. We're going to break it. Thank so we have to wake up and fight. So thank you guys for. for thank you. Hello, caller, your name and where are you calling from? Mo, Mo, when you finish with that, let me put one caller on the line when you finish with that one. Okay. You say your name and calling from Grand Basso, your name? Yeah, E. Kelly Stano, calling for USA from the Kelly Grand Basso County. Go ahead, USA. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, Jeremy, thank you very much. And uh, we can join the show and we will always manage the show. And what you guys are bringing to us is to educate Liberia. Well, look, let me let me say something. Those are listening to the show, national war and international war. And let me say something. If you get to Liberia, you will know that we are in actual poverty. But people are always saying that 
that are Liberian people money. It's not Liberian people money. That money that in God we trust in the United States. And if the people get you that off, if you not use the money for the internet purpose, you'll be in problem with them. But let me just say this. The during the two administration, though we see one hundred and eighty million, eighty five million, it becomes a third richest in Africa, which everybody knows of. Where you took that money from? It's for the United States. There are people making market on the United States that the America is not doing anything. But let me tell you now, what was the outcome of personal we are with your job we are? What he came up in the blood and say, I have to say more in the day or this is my account of assets. You know what he's like in the assets. And Somebody I'll do one minute, one minute, one minute. I'm going to give you a minute now. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> call up for the US, go ahead. Hold on one minute, hold on one minute. Oh, good, good, good evening. Uh, my name is Avi, and I'm calling you from Massachusetts. Uh, thank you guys so much. You said, you, said, you said, what is your name? Avi. Avi who? Avi David. Go ahead. Uh, Avi David. Go ahead. Good um, the thing is this. Uh, first, I want to ask uh, George Global this question. Georgie, I don't know. I, I, I want to ask, when is the woman waiting for to announce his rolling His VP? My second concern I have to do with what Jerry Lemon keep talking. And look, Jerry Lemon, thank you so much, my brother. You are very fine and bring on this show. You keep the show giving you money. Uh, we need to, the, 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 uh, one of the, 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 I mean, our big opposition right now is, 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 is JMB. JMB need to step out his game. JMB need to step out his, his, his game. This thing that we're playing, we play fun with. That's the same thing that happened in local local break local election, and we, we never did nothing. And this is the same thing Jerry Lehman keeps saying. This is a difficult thing that is going on with night, and we said it now and overlooking this thing. If this thing continues and nobody wants to have to hear or, 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 or solution to this thing, we're going to this election, this election is going to be a break. And the only thing that's going to happen in the last time we're going to say, oh God, don't forget about this thing. It's very important to take it back. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mo, you got a call? Yes, I do. Yeah, Charles Robert. Charlie, go ahead. You're on the show. So thank you very much. Uh, Ali, my name is Charles Robert, and I'm in Mogrovia. So I'd like to say good evening to the panelists on the show. And I'm particularly interested in uh, Big Brother PR and you know, exception. We got to bring our own political leader and you know, we have to ask them or push them to do some things. We, because we are in there to win. And then our leaders, what are they listening to us? Sometimes when you tell them, oh, why are you not talking in your house? I mean, you, the, the reason why people come outside is because no one listens to them in your house. So, so they, they come up with their left and answer. Why are we waiting for to announce? Okay, look, we are, you know, everybody is in competition with only one party here, a CDC. So, George, we are running there. There's no one that you are already lost. So, what making it too hard for you know, party to We know right now, you know, what is it? We're going to be a candidate in front of the CDC. So, what did, what did make it so difficult for us, for the public to know who is going to be running in front of the CDC? Why are we waiting for? Ah, we putting people under the microscope. What 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 mission we even using to screw who will be our who will be the boss running it? So I think eh, this still cause problem for everyone. I think nobody want to make it look bad. You know, you say then you get respectful. You want coming get respectful. Then we win election. Don't give me anything. Let me get food to eat. Hey, you know what I mean? Oh, we gotta do something. Thank you, Jazz. Thank you, Jazz. Go let me take the caller. Call Hello. Up. Yes, go ahead. Go let me take the caller, please. Go ahead. Yeah, good, good evening to the panelists. Right, right. uh, my name is Peter C. Jr. and I call from Minneapolis, Minnesota. I want to thank you guys for the show. Yes, sir. Uh, my point here is to Mo Ali. Mo Ali, uh, sorry. Uh, I heard him explain all those things that when he was serving as secretary, they didn't get to do engaging the political leader. I know he might do it behind the scene, but now we don't see it. I don't know whether there was a second crime or silent you guys wore during the time you were serving. That what a lot of people wearing now. That's why they're not speaking since they, they took all leadership in the UPP. First of all, I'm not a partisan you know, or any political party. I'm a patriot. As a patriot, 
I served my country as a police officer in holding the rank of chief inspector. For me to rose to the rank of chief inspector, I, I did the, the, the thing I was supposed to do. As my, I, I got a degree and I wanted my salary to commence with my status, I engaged my leader. And it changed. We, we shared a lot to the political who were serving in government when Ellie Joseph were, were, were president. Now, you, you all of leadership. You, 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 you see the political leader and all of other people in the parties not doing what they're supposed to be doing. Just take the lead. You heard Joe Solo said it all the time. They didn't wait for Joe We are. They step up. Joe We are is calling him, man, you're Tetan. That's the problem. Be calling you, you're Tetan. Why are you doing it? You can't be saying that. I just want to weigh in my point this evening. Thank, thank you, brother. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Can I take this call? Hello, caller, your name? Yeah, uh, good evening. This is Rich Luke Bachman. I call from the world from Bong Mines. Oh, okay. Thank you. At least we got a caller from Bong Mines. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry for taking your time because it's difficult to get through. I just want to weigh in on an issue race. Go right ahead. Yeah, a couple of years ago by Jeremy Mitchell regarding some illicit money activities being perpetrated and sponsored by the project. As I speak, we are a direct victim of such practice. I've been trying to weigh in on class reload to raise the issue, and I can say, I give you my number, you come, you see there are a bunch of West Africans, especially from Senegal, who come on the people and they have money. Can anybody correct me? Where there can be money and there's massive drilling going on along the Singapore River, they put the people on the pretense that they are building hard road. For a couple of years now, this activity is going on without any direct benefit to the affected community. And I hear, I hear nothing from national government. So I feel this is a, a high class, uh, illicit money that is being perpetrated for acting because of the interest of the Putin. And we have to move in. I've been trying to establish links with the. So you know what you do? You should you should text me your name so that after what I can discuss with my colleagues, maybe on the Friday show we can get you on for like five or ten minutes to explain this uh, properly. Yeah. I will appreciate. I will text. Yeah. You know, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hey, this caller from this caller from Oregon. Go ahead. Yeah, my brother, in studio, all of you guys, I pray all of you guys, thank you, and I pray God for you guys, for the good work you're doing, for the Lebron people to make them to know what the right is. I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you, my one of the, uh, the moderator in there make a great point, and I want to tell you thank you, and then how can we tackle these issues with the election process? Uh, I just forgot his name. Uh, he spoke about the uh, people who, how they, would, they, they twist election process around to get to gain the, the, the political strength and all of that. But how do we tackle these things, you know? So these are one of the more important things, you know, that we should be looking at, that we know that the time is coming. And these are the plans for the uh, 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 for the, for these people who want to see election or rigged election. So we got to tackle this issue that these things should, should not happen, you know? Yeah, we, when the brown people go to the polling and, and they do their best, vote for the right person, but let us say they change around. So these are one of the things. Yeah, we, 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 can we, tackle this we agree with you, Colonel. That's the same point we are making here. That's why we're calling on our leaders to rise up to do what they're supposed to do, or right. to, to ensure that the electoral process is free and will represent the will of the people. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Mo, Hello, go caller. Ahead. Go ahead, go ahead, Mo. Yeah. Yeah, caller, your name, where are you calling from? Thank you, go ahead, one minute, quickly. Okay, Chief, I just have a comment, a question. Okay, my question has to do with the, those of you who are analyzing the entire uh, uh, op uh, operation of the government. So I want to ask as to whether when you guys were in opposition and uh, in the ruling establishment at the time, you know, the former United-led government, what, were, what, what was your impact and now you now you are an opposition? And what have been your impact to the people of Liberia now you are telling them that you shouldn't vote President. We are constantly to the tree, but rather they should vote this coming up uh, opposition 
to the to the to the higher higher seat in our country. So once they are showing that you can be can be given to the people of Liberia that we should trust you. And no, that you guys are there. No, we see no, Thank you. Yeah, uh, uh, Pia will respond to you. Yeah, he's there, so you can respond to him. Is he on the line? Hello? Yeah, he's there. The yes, he's on the line. Okay, Mr. 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 Color, during the last government, you saw America sanctioning anybody for stealing. No, 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 okay. No, just leave it. One minute. I'm going to the next one. During the last election, you saw the Ministry of Foreign Affairs writing the Electoral Commission to interfere with the election process. No. Okay. During the last election, I mean, during the last government, you you didn't see the, the brand new road that they built to go to Bikano Grand Bazaar County, and they want to build straight to Guinea Bola. You didn't see the one there. Sorry, President, well, he's also doing the same. He has worked massively in the first president. Okay, so, okay, so Samuel, 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 Liberia was a failed state. The United Party restored Liberia to a functioning democratic society. The United Party inherited Liberia with bad credit, yet the United Party restored Liberia's credit. The United Party inherited Liberia with $6.5 million in its national reserve. We managed to leave Liberia with $154.8 million in our reserve. When we inherited Liberia in 2006, it had $4.9 billion debt. Yet, when we left power, we left Liberia with a little under $900 million in debt. We can show our development for under $900 million. We can talk about roads we built. Ever since with all the iron ore we exported from bond mines, we never paved the road between Kakata to bond mines at the cost of $35 million we paved it. In terms of tackling infrastructure, we left Liberia with the first time ever International Standard Terminal at the Rawas International Airport. We resurfaced our runway when Delta then left Liberia. Not only that, we left Liberia with a ministerial complex. 90% of the project that President Weah have been cutting ribbons on and dancing for are UP completed projects. He wants us to go further. John Lowe, John, 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 John Lowe, you did well. Just hold your brain there. I just, that's not true. Yeah, yeah, that's your teach. That's not true. That's not true. He doesn't even know hello, hello. Let me take your caller. Hello. Yeah. Your name and where are you calling from? Tell me, let me take the caller. Go ahead, caller. This is Samson Mary. I'm calling from the Canon Grand Bible County. Go ahead. You know, the 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 people that are see the new good government that you're talking about, the people are there. Mm -hmm. People who will not see the government, who will not see the order, they are the one calling you know, asking. If I tell you, say, Mo, uh, uh, this, this house can you get you not cooking, cook for you. And I decided to come and cook for you. And my cooking will change. Everything will change. Everything will be all right. So next time, when, when you look at um, uh, um, um, a cloud really you know, please define the word change. You know, there are a lot of people who don't know change. And the government came to say change for who? Who for change? And today, today, only in Germany, they own and they leave the people who for them for them. So people calling for fake in order to call for grandma, can they nobody call for grandma can they own cloud video that to my land at this at this important and Farm program to talk about why finance the government did before. Yeah, so the government that comes to do it, I can't change for home and home for change. What are they doing today? Three of their key men, well, I mean, are sanctioned by the United States government, the government of the whole world. And people sitting here taking steam on their face and they, they want to argue with you. So, and uh, uh, you don't have time for the kind of people. 
Thank you, Chief. So, yeah, Thank you, thank you. So, Hello, caller. Your name where are you calling from? My name is Ghana Gideon. I'm calling from Bone County. Go ahead. I want to commend that I know for the PR and the other people that are on the show tonight. We please be begging you. You extend the program in Bone County. We only listen to you guys on Facebook. I don't think you know. I can't remember that. Our mother, that they even hardly get from some of them only sit and listen to the radio, especially when they come a program on because they got people lying to our people, misleading them. So, when they put when going on, especially in the night time at this time, they on the Prima FM because they're the only station that really people can listen to in Bone County. Here. So, I bet and that and Prima FM is Senator Moy Station. Yeah, or more of it, that's true. That's his station, but you need to do that because Prima F for almost seven to eight counties. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, 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 no one needs to see some of the things I can say. So, uh, we don't be having a program, and I was sitting there in Bonn County, get ready to say, you're not there. Here, yeah, the boy reach out to you. Call for America, go ahead. Call for America, go ahead. All right, Chief, thank you. Hello? Hello? Oh, I'll be the call from America. Hello. Are you on the line, sir? Yeah, my, I'm here. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, okay. yeah. I'll say it today to the team members. I have a few questions. My name is Samuel Salabasta. I call from Florida, Leah Acre. Go ahead. Uh, my question is uh, to Mo Ali. Mo Ali, I just want to firstly say thank you for the time you said. Um, well, but you don't want to election, election, the election, Ali said, when you go for the election, uh, whether you win or not, the, uh, the party manifesto will be given and people will start carrying it around. Are you seeing this going on? Do you do not win? That's okay. Why are you saying this going on? Let me respond to that quickly. Yeah, so that will not will respond to you. Chairman, uh, uh, stay on the line. I didn't respond to you. Let me respond to you yeah. quickly. Um, yeah, yeah we, 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 we said that the party uh, platform for the 2023 election was going to be completed and submitted yes. to the National Convention for approval in Banga. Yes, the platform was completed, submitted, and it was approved by the National Convention. That platform is there, and it, I think the new leadership will be able to say what they are now doing in order to populate the platform and so it can go across to our supporters and non-supporters as well. But the platform is there. You know his answer? Yeah, All right, so their commitment was to ensure they would finalize it and submit it to the, to the convention. the day all of that? Yeah. So the people who in power now got to tell how they're rolling it out and yeah. how to put it around. Steven, maybe you should have yeah. yeah, so, 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 so you are right. We're we'll taking it out with a new leadership. Thank you very much. Okay, sir. Thank you. Can this call? Hello, caller. Your name and where are you calling from? Hello, good evening. Good evening. Put some volume in your voice. Good evening, my brother. Mo. Yeah, go ahead. Mo, I'm asking a pulling now and I call from New Jersey. Yeah, go ahead. One minute, please. Thank you. Uh, uh the first thing is, uh, let me say good evening to your, your colleagues or uh, the panelists on the show. And I do appreciate the fact that you would take up your time to come in and educate us. Uh, but the issue here is the president of this country did not force us at the time to elect him. Now we are seeing, based on the piece of job we gave him, he may using it on the Detriment of our 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 sweat, giving people position that they don't deserve, seeing a lot of wrong things, doing in fact doing a lot of things since the past four to five years, and we are seeing again, we we, we are taking our job on you 
It's not false that he should that he be president in twenty twenty three. So he should stop all the next uh, 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 whatsoever they should stop forcing this at the government or if they don't force her in twenty twenty three to make him president, now we're trying to retire him. Nothing Thank else will do be with stand or I will go with definitely for Thank, Thank you, Carla. Thank you. Okay, more than me. Let oh, me this guy go. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, good evening. My name is Anthony Gay. I'm calling from Delaware directly. Hold on, DJ. I'm concerned. I was black the very first week on the class reloaded the uh, page. What have I done wrong? And what an administrator? You were black? Who? What's his name? What was your name? Anthony Gay. Anthony I'm Gay. Anthony Gay. I you. I screenshot you. I screenshot you. I screenshot you. I George Lobo as well. Did you, did you insult somebody on the, on the, on, 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 on? I don't insult people. I don't insult whoa, people. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We'll check okay. it. Tell you what Anthony, check Anthony, it. Anthony, yeah, we'll yeah, check it out. We'll check it out to make sure what happened. Okay, we'll check it out. Anthony Gay, right? Yeah, G-A-Y-E. Okay, we'll check it out. We'll check it out. Mo, let me take the call up quick because they're calling from somewhere now, America, I think somewhere. Yeah, call up from plus 447. Where are you calling yeah, from? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, you, you. Yeah, you came, Mr. Tio, go ahead. Yeah, I just want to make my point. Um, to the panelists, uh, thank you guys. Uh, I follow you guys throughout. Uh, I just want to remind you people that uh, uh, on the discussion that uh, I know that the senator is not around, but uh, I think uh, I would like to propose so that you guys can, I know the senator is listening, that those who, were commit, who committed the, the criminal act in Liberia, like Petuari and Mankey and Sip. And see for yeah. I think the the Liberal government uh, need to pass a law that those criminals because sometimes when it's still they want to be sending to a representative to shield us uh, so that uh, they cannot be prosecuted. So I think they need to pass a law into Liberia that those who are involved in criminal activity be bound from for contesting as representative or or senator. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Call out your name and where are you calling from? Uh, thank you, Mr. Ali, and thank you to the panelists. This is DJ Lume calling from Corwell. Go ahead. Let One say, minute. Let me say thank you very much, Mo. And the last time when you appeared on the Spoon Talk, and today you're appearing on the OKFM, I really admire you. Look, you talk like a fan of position. And I think where the other men said from Spoon FM that Unity Party will be attacking ANC and ANC be attacking Unity Party. We're all going for one goal. At the end of the day, to move, to move the, to remove the net men from over us, so we'll not be attacking one another. My only advice to the opposition is that where we get together, we can really move the people from over us. Because now, where we are seeing now, we're asking the American government to please help us. In a way that they have cut the guys red and the fans down, because they stay acting here that, oh, they that they, they, they put their elect, no investigation. So I think the American government to please put the people to check and let them go to court. If, because we can't say resigning, then they get our millions in their pocket. We know the kind of homes that they are built around here. We want them to be investigated. If at all they cost them to work, let them go to court. And then everything that is going like, let them back to us. Thank because you, DJ Lomé. Thank you. Thank you, DJ. Second to the more, last caller. More, more you call more I I got a call up from China, Mo Ali, and you know China then hard to get. All right. Go ahead, go ahead call up from China. Mo, that way, one minute. Go ahead, call up from China. Okay. Uh, uh, my name is Hassan Kamara, co chairman of Friend of uh, the Law in China. Uh, of I. Yes, I right. Right. Commencing you guys on the show so there, you know. But I know the point I have to tell our brothers who we are in the uh, opposition to this coming election is a really, really a relation that we have to use to liberate the Liberia. And how can we do that? You know, the poverty rate in our country, looking at it, the government can manipulate, can use that means and 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 put our body our foot with cheap price, like what happened to Lufa? I mean in Lufa. I have few friends who went over there as to 
serve as a, how do I call it? Observer. And they came, every, a few of them have started their own business. And they went over there, they had no money. That simply means you know what I'm saying? We have few guys who were Facebook, uh, uh, criticizing this government in recent time, but just after this election in Lofa, you see these guys have grown CDC, now they are on the CDC team in Kulahu. These are my colleagues, myself, I'm from Lofa. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just trying to say that uh, we don't have to say, and say uh, we be pushing politics. They have to contribute financially because now the uh, election contains money. So this is what I have to tell all our opposition leader. We have to stand firmly, financially and, and, and physically, to to get uh, these talks from our, our country. So, 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 thank you very much. So, social media is a challenge in China. How how are you following the show? Actually, it's not, it's not easy because uh, we have to use a VPN, and I never even sleep because uh, this. All right, I asked that question, Lobo, because I I been to China. I they, they restrict the internet. You gotta use VPN. Yeah. So yeah. More than the last call there, man. Take call, Mo. Mo, you got call? Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. My name is Redman. Joy, I'm at Radio One Hundred Two Point Five in Kiswa. Let me say thank you so much. Go, go ahead, go ahead. You are listening. You are listening to radio in Kiris District Number One. Yeah. Thank you for the topic tonight and for the topic everyone else said because I am the announcer on the radio, so I appreciate so much. Thank you so much. I work for Shadow Radio One Hundred Two Point Five, the Pastor Song. Thank you, thank you, and thank you for relaying us too. We appreciate you and. Uh, we appreciate the, the station management. Thank you for staying all late to, to relay our show. We appreciate it. We station that boy. So this will be my last call. Hello, you are the last call tonight. From Shata FM. Go ahead, Chief. Hello. Go ahead, your name and where are you calling from? Yeah. Hello. Hello, go ahead. Hello, go ahead. Your name and where are you calling from? My name is Robert Opa Gibson, and I do call you from Grand Basel County. Go ahead. Okay, what I want to say here is that our superintendent in Grand Basel to us that Mr. McGee was uh, John the Baptist who came to pave the way for Jesus. But I don't know whether. They joined the party that King, he was a criminal. I don't know whether he came so that uh, he can pave the way for John. We have to, for us more. So, this is what I want to say. <laughs> but he said he, the man was a uh, John the Baptist. Thank you. Thank you. Comrade, com, comrade, comrade, comrade John the Baptist was that a, <laughs> yeah. a different John the Baptist. Friend Lobo, there's a call. I mean, John Lobo, there's a call on the line. I'll talk to him in the background. He said he came on because he has a specific question for you. So, caller, go ahead. All right, take your son on the last call. Hello. Yeah, we're hearing you. Okay, very, very good. Okay, you know, gentlemen, I really appreciate the show tonight. You guys made some good points. Um, and I agree with you totally that the opposition is not beating the drum on some key issues, accountability, declaring assets. All these things are just left, you know, under and just brushed over. And these are key issues. But I want to ask Georgie one question. Georgie, you get my question. What if you had a crystal ball that could see the future? And you could see the future, but you could see that... Uh, Ambassador Borkai will not win the election. Who will you support or what will you do right now? That's my question for you. So no, we'll answer, answer. We'll remain on the line for George to answer. George, go ahead. Uh, uh, PR and the color white is true. I do not really subscribe to hypotheticals. I would just say this to you. Uh, if there was an election between George Weah and Mandela Cooper, I would vote for Mandela Cooper. 
I strongly believe President George Weah should never, ever have occupied the office of the presidency. That was a disaster. So again, I know where that question is coming from. Let me be very clear here today. If Joseph Newman Boaga is not in a race, there is an election between Mr. Cummings and George Weah. Maybe Mr. Cummings will want to talk to me for me to campaign for him, but I will vote for Mr. Cummings. If an election is between Gonglo and George Weah, I will vote for Gonglo. If an election is between Bernard Uwe and George Weah, I will vote for Uwe. If an election is between Nyombli and George, I will vote for Nyombli. George Weah is everything that is opposite a good president. End of story. But All for right. now, until Joseph Walker leave the race, he is the All most right. qualified public servant, and that's who I'm supporting. Period. The caller, the caller is 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 joyously happy with your answer. Apparently, he's an ANC guy. Oh yeah, I know that. Trust me, I know ANC. But ask them the same question and see what they say. They will tell you for that reason we can't bring the UP back to power. That is the <laughs> dishonest thing <laughs> for them that I don't like. So 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 so. Uh, 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 Pia, he stay, Pia, he stay on the line. No, you go. You go. Yeah, you I said the same question. question too. No, no, no. Say, go for that reason. We can't wait. No, you be more the power. Oh, just yeah, have no answer. So he, 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 he said thank you, and, and, and he just left. You are happy with the answer he heard? I, I know, I know the people. But, but, yeah. but, 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 but wait, wait a minute. It's a, it's a, it's an important discourse. I, I hope you pick the phone. I'm calling you right back. Oh, yeah, <laughs> little man, the man's gonna have to. Oh yeah, why you want your phone for? Still, still want to answer the man. Someone, someone, if anyone answer again. So what are you doing? He want, okay, hello? Hello. Yeah. So, so your question, were, were, I mean, your question was answered by, by, by George. But, 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 but Stevie, 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 Stevie has a question for you too. Okay, but, but part of it, he didn't answer the question. I said, what will he do? How will he really use his resources now? Not who he will vote for. I will give it to whoever is running against George Weah. So, so I will give my resources to who is running against George Weah. The resources will be given to whoever he supports against George Weah. Whoever is running against George Weah. So the question for you two now, the the I mean, when people ask what kind of question, they concern about probably you two have a side, and I want to know from you if that side you have for some reason is not in the election, what will you do? Okay. Beside I have in the election, and this is my honest answer, I believe that George Weah can turn the corner. Okay. All right? And I believe it is his election to lose. And I still believe he can turn the corner. These his sanctions and all these things, these are bringing him to either you face it or, you know, prove yourself to be a good leader or go down in a different way. And so I'm still looking at that. And if he does not, then it will be his to lose. People, uh, he will, he will, he will, his, his whole legacy will collapse. We right now we are at an inflection point. It all depends on what he does now to prove himself as a good leader. So, in other words, you are either a sedition or a supporter of George Weah. Yeah, please. I George Weah has legacy. Okay, okay. I wish the UPI had some of the legacy for us. Yeah, so they do, they do, they do. They do vote. 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 They Oh, you, you, the side you support them lost. Yes. I guess it was Mr. Cummings. No, you're wrong again. So can you can you be honest with her and tell who that side was? No, I, I, prefer, I prefer not to. Yeah, yeah. 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 All right, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Most, 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 let me tell you, Pia, most intelligent seditions have been hiding under the canopy of the ANC. That is one thing, that is one thing that Mr. Cummings enjoys. Most of the people who are sedition, true sedition, that can't say I'm sedition, they all say the ANC support or they support Mr. Cummings. Now, when it gets to that point, then they have to come out. That's it. Yeah, yeah but they, 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 they call my get interrupted by the local call. Uh, 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 gentlemen, please, this this fellow been calling a lot from, I think, China or so. He wants to make contribution. Please, just one minute. Go ahead. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm 
inside your corner from Asian China. I want to say thanks for you guys. You know, the caller I just called right now, I would like him to be like a relative to me where I'm going to be living with him and sitting all his money, sitting all his money. So when I take all his money from him, then he can recalibrate, you know, putting himself together again for another time. Some of the guys, they are not ashamed to come on here and say the CDC government can turn things around the second time. Where in the world you see people dying in the country and the government is celebrating those kind of our attitude? Where in the world you see someone is stealing up to press it? They are not fired from their work. We are still benefiting from the Liberian people. When we all these things stop and we call ourselves Christians, then the God is staying in the churches, they say they are pastors. Look, it is time for us to start whipping some of these guys in a passive building in our Senate or house. Some of them need to be when people need to walk, we need to follow or people put out walk to their houses and whip them that go about passing bill and still celebrating. Criminal attitude in the country. Look how the fuck. People cannot even find their way. And people are celebrating corruption. My, my man, my man, we'll land. see you, man. Good. My man, we'll see you. Good night, man. Thank you for calling. And say, yeah, this man is wrong. He has stolen a lot of money. He needs to go to jail by now. My man, God. man thank you. Good night. Thank you for your contribution. <laughs> thank you. Good night, man. <laughs> my man, we'll see you. Guys, I think it was something, Billy. It was a, it was a great show. I think... Um, we had a very good time. I, I, I do appreciate the callers, the many callers who called to make their input. Um, I think um, we had a wonderful time. So um, we've reached a point where we we uh, we come to a close. So um, can we now go across the floor where we hear from each of you your your parting comment? Uh, um, Ali, let me since you you way out there in Liberia, let let's let begin the conversation. Ali. Yeah. So let yeah yeah your your yeah your okay uh, and you can talk about you. in two thank minutes you, you can we, talk about some of the issues the caller talked about and yeah it, it, it was really fun. Um, two calls caught my attention. The last caller from China, you know, he talked about the whipping thing. In fact, at three calls, the whipping of corrupt officials. Maybe when you start to do that, people will just begin to to change their attitude. And then the, the guy from, from Bong Mines, I think we, we, we need to talk to him because he said Pierre raised that issue uh, about the pro -tem mining illegally or whatever it is. We know the pro -tem have been engaged into mining for a very long time. And the guy said they are suffering from that. And lastly, the last caller was uh, the guy who called from, Bong Ma from, from, from Banga. We really need to re-engage our senator he has that radio station, that premium FM, so that they can relay the show. I remember we spoke to him once, but every time you call the, the, the guy at the radio station, the manager, then he send you back, oh, well, you got to talk to Senator Bowie. Then when you talk to Senator Bowie, he say, I've given the instruction to the guys, you'll talk to them. And they just been playing all like football back and forth like that. And this show benefits them. He is a senator. Tomorrow we could call him on the show to come and explain to the people of Bonn what he's doing in the county, what are his successes. And, and we should even start inviting our other lawmakers. I think yes. uh, Clarence Massacre will be waiting to come on and other lawmakers. We need to call them. Let them come and tell us why they make some of the laws or what they are doing, what are their achievements. And we'll be looking for guests all over the place. And we got them. They should be coming here. They should not be only about the four of us or the five of us coming on. Senator Dillon is on always. Other lawmakers should make use of the show to come and talk to us. Um, the neck, look, neck is not credible. 
Baby Etta Brown Lansana sits over there and she takes instruction from the CDC because they recommended her there. We all heard Pia talked about it and it's no secret. She is not independent. She hates to see we, the opposition figure. She hates to see the unity party and other opposition party. They have succeeded and, and helped to bring the split in the Liberty Party instead of fixing the problem in the Liberty Party, they've taken side. The devil, they're causing trouble in LP. When the Supreme Court rules, they bring it to them. And then uh, somebody else writes a letter. They say they don't agree. I don't understand why they are doing that. And to the foreign ministry, we shine our eye on your, the reason why you want specimen from neck. We all want to know. We all will follow that specimen. We'll know where it's going. If it's going to the embassy, we'll make sure that the real embassy is in the U.S. embassy. And they too, look, the American embassy cannot be requesting it and they can uh, tell the Liberian people what they, why they want it. Or the foreign ministry should tell or why the American embassy wants it, if it is true. But the embassy is not. election commission that data. Well, there are a whole lot of things going on. So let, let's see what happens. But they should not be requesting for specimen from elections commission. That election data, they, it can be used to manipulate election results. And given the number of people that are angry in their country, when you try to make 23 election, it will be a different story. People angry all over the place. You pass in the street, you see people there vest. You don't even talk to them, you just pass near so many highway. The best way you they want be you that because of the poverty. Man passing, he looking for full money for his children. He looking for school fee. He can't get it. If that you say you just be very vest. Thank you. Thank you, George. Uh, I want to speak to the Liberian people. I use this opportunity wisely. I want to thank my fellow panelists. I want to thank our audience. Uh, to you, to those of you who call, those of you who agree and disagree with us, I want to thank all of you. But for me, I like to be very, very simple. Uh, to those of you who say uh, they wait to see us come to Liberia, I say to you, my fellow Liberians, elections is an opportunity for you to go and exercise your constitutional right. The right that is ensuring in the Constitution in Article 1 that say all power is inherent in the people, that is the opportunity you have to transfer that authority to somebody to say, because I will be too busy, because the capital building can't contain all of us. I want you to go there and represent me. That is the opportunity you will have again. However, you've made a lot of poor choices in the past. The results is what is impacting your life today. Many of you have lost relatives, loved ones, friends, family members, because of the health facility in the country. President George Weah, I recall in, 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 in red light, during the campaign said, the hospitals, they go to abroad. I will build those hospitals here for you. You don't have to worry. President Weah took less than six months to complete his condominiums, build a church, build for himself a studio. He has now released over five singles. Yet the 14 military hospital that's supposed to be an iconic symbol of his accomplishment is staying on a 85% completion. This is to tell you where the main priority lies. It's not about you people. President, we are don't care about you folks. There's no way we should be here discussing this. But I say to you, my fellow Liberians, President, we are can attempt to cheat. Folks, let me tell you, you can only cheat in an election where there's a close margin. Look, you've been suffering for the past five years plus. Dedicate that one day to election, ensuring that when you vote, let us camp outside. We should not be saying, you know what? There were no pool workers there. No, you should be a pool washer. Make sure that whoever is going in that room when they come out, you yourself observe that person and say, no, my man, you already went inside. Attempting to go inside your race is concern. Look, we should not delay with 2023 election. We should not be discussing runoff. We should vote like we're voting against the prices of rice. When you go to vote, vote like you're voting against the prices, the transportation costs. You are voting against school fees. And when you vote in that manner, 
the CDC will not be brave to do anything, folks. I want to say, but I agree with Mo and other panelists here. Our government needs to be credible. President, we are took an oath to defend and protect the Constitution. Sadly for us, this man have abandoned, has abandoned his job. This man has turned his back on you folks. It is an opportunity you will have to tell him, thank you for the good job he's doing. And I want to appeal to all of you, my fellow Liberians. I do not like ungrateful people. I will always say this to you. I don't like ungrateful people. If President Weir have improved, has improved your life over the last five years, please, I'm begging you in the name of God, take your children, all of you people, line up your go for for him. But if you know that nothing has been done to improve your life, you have an obligation to yourself, your future, your country. Vote like you've never, ever thought you would vote again. Vote against George Weir. President Weir will be representing the ticket of the CDC. True. But this time around, it will be a different one. First, he was elected on the Coalition for Democratic Change. He will now be representing the CDC, which will be the Coalition for the Development of Corruption in Liberia. That is the ticket he will be representing. So you will have a choice. I think it will be a lot easier for you when you see CDC. You know exactly what it stands for. I want to say thanks to all of you. Thanks for being here. i see you again. Bye-bye. Thank you, George. Pia. Look, um, Liberians, wherever you are, you should be resolved by now that if met in collaboration with those in power, break the 2023 elections, the brigade of angels from heaven should not be able to save them. They should have no place to hide. It should be instant justice for them. Don't sit down and think it's normal when somebody steals election. It's okay for peace, that leave it. If they steal the election, create hell. We are hellfire on earth for them. And as a way of responding to a lot of people who may think that a caller who asked that question that Lobo and I tried to address. Let me just say these few words. When President Sadiq was elected in 2005, we have just concluded the process of destroying our country. Even Monrovia that you refer to today as your capital city did not have a single role. The major boulevard in that city was made meme after the first minister of public wealth because nobody could drive on it. It was referred to as Donso Massage because you could not drive on it. You had zero electricity, zero water. You owed nearly five billion in debt to international debtors. It disqualified you from being able to take any loan. The few roads that were existing in the country had all damaged. I come from Grand Basso County. I took six hours to travel to Buchanan because the road had completely been destroyed. I was doing an NGO work, so I had to travel across the country. I went bunk County several times. It would take me nine to 10 hours to go to Ganta. Oh, yeah. yeah. When President Sally took over, she rebuilt all the roads in Monrovia. And I mean, all the roads and added several new ones. Community roads, like going to Jamaica Road, uh, SKD Boulevard, AB Tower Road. This road, the second road, road. All the little roads that were passing all around Monrovia were rebuilt. Then the road leading to my beloved Grand Basel that I was taking seven hours to go was rebuilt. I drove there several times in one hour, 30 minutes before I left Liberia. The entire road between Monrovia and Ganta Bolo that was destroyed was completely rebuilt. Money was secured for road network in, in the Southeast. Money was secured for road in Lofa County. You can go on Nimi. Public, most of our public offices were in people's private homes and we place them into government-owned buildings, including our ministerial complex. Mm -hmm. We built service center across the country. The fiber optic. Where government institutions were made to conglomerate to make their transaction of business very easy. We landed the fiber optic, like Stephen said, in, in Liberia. That's why today, some of you can still watch us on the internet here while the class is on. And we can go on Nimi, 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 Nimi. With the, the, the electricity. For the first time, in the social development fund, we work with the West African Power Pool.
to, 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 to import electricity from the power pool to Liberia. That process just concluded. Sooner or later, you see electricity all over the place and you'll be misled. You think it's a weird achievement. No. That's a process that started. Even all of the guys that are there were memed by the past government, uh, 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 Sheik and other people who are there. We did all of that. So if you ask those kinds of questions, we didn't kill auditors on Broad Street. Auditors were government officials doing clear. John Malou was the hottest auditor ever on earth. He accused the very government he worked with for being three times more corrupt than Taylor when he did not do a single audit. No, nothing struck him. But then yes, why and others who thought to work in the interest of our, of our country were crushed to death. There was no time when the United States of America had to see the need to sanction anybody in that government. If anything, the country was celebrated. Your president at the time met with two U.S. presidents. She met President Obama one-on-one -on -one in the White House. George Bush went to Liberia to meet her. Liberia was a darling of the international community, not because they were in love with Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, but they were, they were pleased, exceedingly pleased with the output of the post-war government that inherited a broken and destroyed country. If you think, like Lobo said, that those things happen just like that, and that level was so difficult for you those days, and it's good now, go tomorrow and vote for Mr. Weir. But we, who are away from the country, we know what we're passing through for many of you. You're asking us every time for things we don't have because you can't make it, you can't survive, the country is hard. If you think that's okay, then it's up to you. But we are committed and very determined to ensure that Mr. Weir and his legs would not have a second term. And we appreciate the government of the United States of America for assisting us since our government cannot act for shaming individuals who are stealing and doing all kinds of evil in our country. The first three persons, their bullet hit, they are all gone. Beware, the list is long. More coming. If the first three had to leave, when your name comes out, you got to leave. If you don't leave, there'll be citizen in action. There'll be citizen in arrest. So, we are ready. We are ready. But please, we are begging our leaders. Please, we are begging the political actors. Stop paying attention to useless things. Pay attention first to ensuring that we have free, fair, credible, transparent elections. If you are not committed to those things, it doesn't matter how many persons get on radio and pledge to vote for you. It doesn't matter how many persons wear t-shirts and say we were former UP people we the other party. It's uselessness, it's waste of time. Fight for the integrity of our electionary process. Ensure accountability. Comfort Sawyer should not be sitting still at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. She has brought an out of criminality to our most trusted traditional ally, the United States of America. By the response of the US, she lied that the US asked her for specimen. We should not be happy with that. We will say more, Stephen, but I'll leave it right there. Thank you, Pierre. I think you, you you made the closing argument for the show today. I, I'll just <laughs> I'll just say a little word. Oh, yeah, let's say a little word to it because you made the closing Read argument. Your I think, Jerry, your coach. I think no. Let me just in, in one minute say this. The next year is a crucial year for our democracy. Um, it is a time when Liberians from all walks of life, from the nooks and crannies of the country will form long queues across the length and breadth of our country to vote. It will be an election that will decide whether we give chance to a new, experienced, mature leadership, or we continue with this corrupt and kleptocratic administration under George Weah. It will be a time where we decide between progress as a nation or to retrogress as a nation, as we are doing already. It will be a time to decide whether we move forward or to keep reversing under the George Weah like we were doing under the George Weah administration. So be that as it may, there are a few candidates around. There are people across the length and breadth of our country passing around, you know, campaigning, talking about vote. But among them, there are people who have the experience. There's this one man with the experience 
with the governance credential, with the audacity, with the history, someone who has the integrity, someone who we need to move our country forward, somebody who has been tried, tested, and proven, somebody whose love for Liberia is a match, somebody whose desire to see our country move in the right direction is unparalleled. Liberians, this is the time. With 12 months to elections, we have to rally around and support a candidate. And that candidate is Joseph Yuman Buaka. And so we thank you all for joining us today on the class reload uh, as we come on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Friday. We'd like to thank you all for joining us. We'd like to say thank you to all of our folks in the comment section, all of those listening to us via radio. We'd like to say thanks to Bourgeois Radio FM 98.1 in Montserrado. Shakta FM 102.5 there in Montserrado, uh, Radio Dupa FM 89.1 there in Grand Basso County, Radio Joy Africa 97.5 in Margibi, Voice of Gompa 106.5 there in Nimba County, Puto Radio FM 102.3 there in Sano. Our quote for the night is by Colin Powell, and it says, The root cause of poverty is injustice, is social injustice and the bad government that affects it. So it says the root cause of poverty is social injustice and the bad government that aids and abets it by Colin Powell. On that note, we'd like to say thank you all for joining us on The Class Reloaded. We will be back on Friday with another fascinating edition. Thanks to everybody for joining us. Thanks to our panelists, Mo Ali, George P. Lobo Jr., Jerilemne, Matthew Pierre, and everyone for turning in. So I uh, thank you all for joining us. Have a good so, night. So, so George, George, you have his show face? My man, I sent you the I sent you the friend request because I could not send you the link. So you have to accept the friend request and I'll send I accepted that friend request ever since it doesn't show okay, you get it. Link. More, we're looking forward to having you one of these now you want to be lawmaker that's why you can't say they drop you 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 you, you, you aspire I will, with I will, I will I will send you my email I, I prefer the link to my email. Beautiful send me your email as well in the text I will do it. So more yeah, yeah. So George, yeah, we'll see. George, 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 we have you have right to the drive before. That one are true. I no I you have you invited me before. Oh but the after 12 or so you can start. Yeah, yeah, you know that. Yeah, George, yeah. George show is very George show is very late. That one you're gonna have to say, you know, I'll go to sleep before I come up. But you see what let me tell you. Mo is my disciplinary chairman. People who can't discipline me, they run to Mo. Now that you're not SG, I don't know if they'll say me running to him because small they, they run to Mo. And <laughs> Mo, Mo Ali, then he'll come in, my man. Oh, oh. So I don't know. Mo SMP has to be disciplining you. Pierre and the disciplinary man. The man must say, how they are today. Oh, yeah. The man has been disciplining people all day. All all right, right. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for our audience. Bye bye. Bye bye. Good night. In Liberia. November 1944, a public spirited person was born. Joseph Numa Wakai from Wasanga, Foya District, Lofa County. He is a role model. He's actually my inspiration. He's also a perfect example of humility. He's a very humble person. Through that papi, the happy start giving all from this swap here. I know that when he get there, he will help me. He will help the nation. Liberians, register to vote for the 2023 general and presidential elections. Registration starts December 15, 2022 and ends March 17, 2023. Your vote is your voice. Be heard. Vote as if your life depends on it because it does. You have the power. Use it register to vote play your part a message from the class reloaded with sponsorship from africa media in Liberia, November 1944, 
November 1944, a public spirited person was born. Joseph Numa Wakai from Wasanga, Foya District, Lofa County. He is a role model. He's actually my inspiration. He's also a perfect example of humility. He's a very humble person. Through that papi, the help he start giving all from this swap here. I know that when he get there, he will help me. He will help the nation. In Liberia. It's all.